I'm disappointed in every one of you. I'm sorry, I don't mean to offend you. I'm disappointed in every one of you. I kiss you on the mouth. No, no, I'm not, I'm not cool with that. I'm, just, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. One more time. I'm disappointed in every one of you. I mean, I'm dealing with degenerate animals. I'm, I'm disappointed in every one of you. Yo, yo. Disappointed in every one of you. All right, all right, come on. Honestly, I can't do it, bro. I'm disappointed in every one of you. Let me tell you why. It's gonna be all right, Nicky. Go ahead, go ahead. Shoot, yo. You just kill the fucking man. What are you going to do about it? Yeah, because you got nothing. You don't got a thing. Yeah, because you got nothing. You got nothing. I want to get out. I want to get out of this rat hole. I want to get online. I need BDA boxing. everybody to happy the boxing podcast special night edition it's a double double two for one tonight two episodes within uh, a span of three hours because we're going to talk to former light flyweight champion hall of famer miguel well actually miguel <laughs> why are you calling me like? michael carvajal i'm going with the spanish one here we just had a crazy episode a couple of uh hours ago and now we're back and I'm, I'm doing two things at the same time here so bear with us for the moment fellas thank you for joining us it's gonna be a good one talking to a former champ bona fide all-time great one of the people that really started the the, the putting the, the little guys the small guys on the map the lighter weight divisions they it's they don't usually get a lot of respect and he was one of the ones that started it. So shout out to Michael Carver Hall. He will be joining us soon. I got Gonzalo on the line here. Gonzalo, are you there? Yeah, how's it going, Mr. BDA? Good, good, man. And by the way, thanks again for uh, setting this up, uh, this, this interview. It's not always easy to coordinate things, especially with uh, what you've got going on. But uh, uh, hold on a second. Uh, hey, Jay, please meet your mic, man, please, because you got some backgrounds. Thanks, man. So, yeah, we're going to be talking to Michael Carvajal. And thanks again, Gonzalo. Thanks for all of this. And uh, this interview probably going to be starting around uh, 9 o'clock. He might be calling in at 9. Um, I do have to set up here the uh, specific of how we're going to do it. So... You guys take it away if you want to. I mean, Michael Carbajal, what did you guys think about him, his career and some of the, the, the wars that he was in and some of the upsets, especially later on in his career that he pulled off? Um, by the way, Jay, thanks for being on, man. appreciate it as well, as always. Um, yeah, Gonzalo, you, you want to start, man? Well, you know, growing up, I was really intrigued with his career. Like, um, now, nowadays, they talk about pound-for-pound pound fighters and what the smaller men represent on that list. And, you know, it was something about his punching power. And now to, like, uh, put everything into perspective, what he achieved, you know, first ballot, uh, Hall of Famer, Fighter of the Year, 93. Um, and champion, he, he, when he debuted, he beat a guy that later went on to become champion. That fight, in, that fight in that trilogy in the 90s was one of, like, the greatest fights of all time. The first one with Chiquita Gonzalez. And that later to... to uh, Close his career, beating a guy that also went on to become a champion in Jorge Arce and everything in between. Man, dude, he he was like, he's considered one of the the hundred uh, pound for pound greatest fighters of all time, according to like the Bleacher Report in some sites. So this guy was legitimately a bona fide, like you said, pound for pound. I, I, he was so popular that even back in the days, you know, he used to rock a ponytail, and I, I used to rock a ponytail just because of him and Eric Morales, you know. So, man, you know, he resonates with me big time, and he's just one of my, my favorite fighters of all time. And now having witnessed this fight with the Chocolatito and Estrada, you know, these, uh, these flyweights, you know, I remembered, you know, this was, it's the perfect time. We couldn't get him last week, but we got him now. And it's just, you know, it, it, it'd be a, like an honor to have him on. That's all I got to say. 
Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, uh, he went to the 88 Olympics, uh, Summer Olympics, that is, over in Seoul. Uh, made it all the way to the final. Uh, for people to remember, that's, that's not an easy thing to do, man. They fight about three, four times. And so to make it to the final, you, you had to have fought a bunch of times against tough opponents. Uh, three rounds, so you go all out within those three rounds. It's not There's no filling out processes. You start off right off the bat. So he made it to the final. It was a, a controversial decision that went against him so he ended up uh, earning himself a silver medal uh, that was an olympic team man that included roy jones kennedy mckinney R riddick bow i believe or yeah ray mercer uh some you know he was just an insane man the talent was insane in there so yeah man shout out to, to michael carvel for making it there it's, it's insane that the level of talent that was in that uh in the division or in that team rather the other thing is there was a point where some people say, well, the little guys, you know, they can't really make it uh, all that far uh, because there's, you know, the, their records aren't all that great. Man, let me tell you something. The little guys, they represent what boxing used to be. They fought everybody. They fought each other all the time. So, of course, you're going to have a couple of guys with losses. Uh, all this, uh, oh, I'm going to fight one guy and, you know, once a year and stay undefeated, that, that, that doesn't fly didn't fly in the old days, and he doesn't fly in the lighter divisions. Of course, we're going to talk about his three fights with uh, Humberto Chiquita Gonzalez, legendary. And also, the mark of a champion isn't just, well, did you win a title or how many titles did you win? Is did, Could you come back from defeats and, and show that you still had it, especially against younger opponents, which is what he did against uh, Jorge Arce, who went on to become a hell of a fighter himself. So uh, it's going to be a good one, man. It's going to be a good one. And you know what? Gonzalo, also, his nickname was uh, Manos de Manitas de Piedra, or Little Hands of Stone. And he certainly demonstrated that. I want to ask him about his how he shifts weight in his shots. Because I don't know if you saw that, 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 like that, that when he knocked out uh, uh, Gonzalez with that left hook. It was a short left hook on the inside. Boom. Not, not, not wide, not, uh, you know, sneaky. It's the type of shot you don't see coming. Because you, you're at that distance. Most guys don't know you, they're going to get hit with that. So the fact that, you know, Gonzalez certainly didn't expect it either. So I want to ask him about that. Uh, Mr. This, Vidier, yes. did you post the link? Uh, because they're prepared to uh, click on it. Fantastic. All right, let me, start, yeah. uh, let me set that up here. By the way, Jay, are, Jay, are you there? Just so I know if you're... Yeah, I'm here. Can you, you, have to, can you hear me? You have to put Michael Carbajal. Well, hold on, hold on. I'll, Gonzalo, Gonzalo, I'll tell you in the, in the chat room. I'll, I'll tell you in the chat room. On the stream yard. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell. I'll, I'll tell you what the, the name there. But hold on. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, Jay, uh, you got any questions you're gonna want to ask? Like, give us your thoughts on, on Michael Carbajal, please. Well, uh, thoughts on Michael Carbajal first. Of all, I'm, I'm sorry, Jay. Wrong. I'm sorry. I apologize, uh, Mr. BDA. So, if you post uh, the link on the chat, so I can uh, walk them through uh, what what you told me. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. If they, if it, yeah. I'm going to do that. I'm okay. gonna, sorry. So go ahead, Jay. Sorry about that. We're, we're scrambling first over here, all, too. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for very much for having me on and something like this. It's complete. It's always an honor to be on your show, but something like this is ultra special for, uh, uh, for any fan. Um, I mean, what, what Gonzalo said was everything. First of all, but to nail, to, to really put the icing on the cake when you're talking about how he went out. Yeah, Floyd Mayweather went out with a quote-unquote title. Okay, whatever. Muhammad Ali did not. Sugar Ray Leonard did not. Sugar Ray Robinson did not. Marvin Hagler did not. And not only did he woe out winning a title, he won a, a, over a guy who I'm pretty sure Arce one day will make it into the Hall of Fame. To just put that in perspective of how he retired at the end of his extremely illustrious career. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I mean, how many people? How many people can say that? Exactly, man. And and the difficult thing is, too, uh, staying away from the, the game when you you're, you still got some gasoline left in the tank and you're beating younger guys, but, you know, you made a promise that you were going to retire. So that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's hard to walk away from that also as well, man. So, um, Gonzalo, are you on the yeah, right stream? Right after you win a title, you're going to retire. <laughs> well, how many guys do it, though? Gonzalo, are you on the, on the stream yard? Gonzalo. All right. Sorry about that, because we got StreamYard, and because uh, it's it's we don't want to go around telling people to join the the Discord because it's a little more complicated. So StreamYard is always easier. But now I gotta find out if uh, 
if Gonzalo can can hear me, because he's the one that's relaying the information. All right, Gonzalo, let me know, man. Doom, doom, doom. Hey, meanwhile, yeah, man. So check it out. We got uh, Mark. We're gonna be talking to Michael Carvajal as soon as we establish a connection over here. Um, hold on a sec, Gonzalo. Is this you, man? Kike, Kike. Yeah, that's not Gonzalo. I don't think that's Gonzalo. I, no, actually, Kike. Gonzalo used to. Do, Gonzalo used to do. <laughs> Gonzalo used to do that. By the way. Okay. I'll send you a message. All right. Wait, wait a minute. How does this shit? Uh, yeah. I think if there's one question, I'm, I'm I'm probably already gonna know the answer is, is there one fight that he didn't get that he'd won? And I think I already know the answer to it, but I just want to hear him say the answer. Yeah, man. I mean, well, I think I know ex what you're. T <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'm not. I'm trying to think over here uh, about w what you're talking about. But I'm not gonna try to read your mind. Listen, it's gonna be a a, a conversation, f a free flowing conversation. I don't want it to be too formal. So you guys, you know, if you catch something and and that he says and you want to ask or or, ex or want him to expand upon it, just go ahead, man. All right. Um. Uh. What else was I gonna say about this? Hold on a second. Juggling various things at the same time. Uh, yeah. Well, there's no other way to do this, so we gotta. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hey, Gonz hey, Gonzalo's gone on, on top of that. Gonzalo is the BDA booking agent for sure now. Uh, hold on a second. Maybe I can get him to get Orlando Canizales to come on. I'm friends with him on Facebook, but I, I haven't really been able to iron that one out yet. Well, listen, if I, I think you told us that he, he doesn't really want to, he's not a big, you know, some fighters are not shy, but they, they don't like uh, the attention. So, right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's up to them. And I mean, it's, it's, that's, listen, oh, no, I'm not going to pressure him. I mean, he's just a guy I say uh, hi to on Facebook every once in a while. Oh, he's more than that as a person, but. Like, we don't talk all the time and share memories. I, I just say, hi, champ, when he's on. And then I did, when Gonzalo asked if, asked me to ask him, it, he bit as if he sounded like he was interested and then said, not right now, is basically the way if I remember correctly. So, mm -hmm. And since we're on the air, I'm not going to go any further into it because I, you know, no, no telling how somebody can read into this. But like I said, if Gonzalo is able to, like, talk people into being on the show, I'll by, be happy to be the go-between for those two because i would love to have him on the show and talk to him as well sure absolutely man but listen we're, we're trying to set this up here for the meantime uh i don't know where gonzalo gonzalo's probably yeah it's it's because again we were trying to do it through the discord but uh it's it's you know it's a little more complicated because you gotta create an account and all that uh meanwhile shout out to everybody in the chat room i forgot to say hi to everybody in the chat room here Shout out to Uncle Burnt Apostrophe, Ed Dantes, Jimmy D. Giles, uh, Bold Hype, Blue Color Sports TV, St. Brit, Mexico 214, Hawker Mustang, BK, Giuseppe La Roca, Mark. He says he's a super fan. Hey, Mark, let me know if you want to jump on, man. Uh, we could uh, use all the super fans we can for this uh, a very special opportunity. Meanwhile, Gonzalo's MIA. Um, let me see if I can contact him here give me two seconds fellas this is the the type of stuff here we've got going on right now i'm pretty sure i think he's trying to walk him through how the how the stuff uh, works because again it's you know they gotta get the link and they gotta we got i actually have to set up to see here how uh how we're gonna see him on screen or actually if we can hear him uh <laughs> yeah, I, had, I had a problem one time when i tried to go through um that other link it took me forever to learn how to use Discord, but then when I tried to use, um, um, what was the other one you're trying to get one through? Oh, hold on a second. Uh, the Discord. Right now we're on Discord, but uh, right, uh, yeah, you contacted me through Discord here. I set up an account, but uh, that icon that uses the duck, I can't remember what it's called, but I, yeah, I, I yeah, had a hard a, time trying to use that one. Yeah, it's, it's a, it can be it can be a, a pain in the at, can be a pain in the ass. Had a hard man, time. But, yeah. <laughs> All right, listen, uh, Jay, we got uh, Michael on the line here, I think. Michael, can you hear us? No, oh, I can't uh, Can't hear Michael for the moment here. Michael, can you hear us? No, I can't hear him. 
Am I on here? Oh, sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry. Sorry. All right. I think now I can. I, I think now we should be able to hear you, Michael. How are you doing, man? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, man. Thank you for being on, Michael. It's an honor to talk to okay. you. Okay. Can you see him yet? Excuse me. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Yes, I but can you hear. You can't see him. No, we can see him. We can see him. He's on the screen here. Oh, you said you couldn't see him. Okay. No, no, we can. Yeah, hear okay, him and yeah, see him. Fantastic. We're good then. Yeah, we're we're doing all right over here. So listen, we got uh, Michael Carbajal on the line, former world champion and Hall of Famer on the line. Michael, thank you for being on, man. Really appreciate it. And uh, shout out to Gonzalo, one of our panelists here, who uh, managed to set the whole thing up. How you doing, champ? Good. I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? We're doing fantastic, man. Did you uh, were you at the gym today, training as always, and training people? What? Hello. Yeah, I can't hear you. Were you at the gym training people right now or earlier on? Yes, I just got out of the gym. So the gym is still you. You're still at the same gym. Nine, what's it called again? Ninth Street. Uh... Yeah, Michael Carbaugh's Ninth Street Gym. Nice, nice. How long have you had that one for? Since '93. Jeez, and you <laughs> you haven't stopped. Do you still train there a little bit, hitting the bag and all that? Or? Oh yeah, I still do everything except sparring. Well, if you start sparring, then you'll get the, the urge to jump back in the ring, I, I assume. That's what always happens to fighters. Uh, no, I don't, no, I don't have an urge. I've been asked that quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen. Uh, I, I, so I, don't, I don't have an urge for it. Right, right. Well, listen, uh, you, you did it all, man, so I can understand that. Thank um, you. I got a, a couple of people here. I got a couple of people here, so we're just going to ask you some questions. Just go with the flow. Um, we'd like to talk to you for about 30 minutes, and you, you let us know if you want to go longer or let us know five minutes beforehand when you have to go because I know you're busy. So uh, just let us know how it goes, and uh, yeah, we'll take we'll take it there. But uh, Okay, one thing I've always wanted to ask you, man. One thing I've always wanted to ask you. I'll start off here. Um, because, every, you know, your, your nickname was Little Hands of Stone. Manitas de Piedra, like Duran, you know, that was taken care of there because of your power. But when did you realize that you hit harder than people around you? I, I realized that at, at a very young age, <laughs> probably after my first amateur fight. It was, it was weird. I mean, I already knew because I fought a very experienced kid. And um, I had rocked him, and I was only 85 pounds. So I pretty much knew that I had a lot of power. My dad always taught me to throw with power. Right, yeah. You, but that's the other thing is you, the way you shifted your hips, if, if I, when I watch your fights on YouTube, it's you're always like you would throw the right and your weight would go all the way to the other side. Like you were shifting your weight very well and always on balance on equilibrium. Is that something that you worked at like a maniac in the gym or is that just, did you just catch on that naturally, that instinct? I, I, I pretty much caught on to that. And then I, I uh, with the experience, you know, with the amateur experience as it, as it went on, then I pretty much caught on. Yeah, because when you knocked out uh, Chiquita Gonzalez, you, you threw some a, a vicious left hook, but I'm, I got long orangutan arms, so I can't really fight on the inside all that well. It's not my 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 home. It's more on the outside. But when you threw that, like they call that the th you know the six inch or three inch shot, where did you get that from? Like, how did did you just practice that a lot? Did you again? Did you do that by instinct or? Well, I I um like I said, everything came about experience with experience and the and the basic teaching of, of fighting and punching um i've learned a lot with experience yes now who, who got you into the who who taught you that the basics it, was it a, a specific trainer was it your brother was it your father like where did you get that that, that well, the fundamentals it was, it was my father my father showed me the basics he he taught the whole family he taught the whole family the girls also just the basics <laughs> of uh, boxing. And um, I fell in love with it. Wait, the girls too were boxing in your family? Oh, yeah. Like, well, the girls, they all didn't fight. I mean, he just taught them just the basics to uh, protect themselves. 
Sure, sure. Yeah, that's important. That's important. And by the way, listen, we got a uh, super fans of yours here. Uh, people that grew up watching you. We got Jay Gonzalo who who set this up as well. We got recognized. Guys, feel free to jump in whenever you want and with a question, man, because I mean it's again we're just doing it free form over here. Jay, you got you got something? Uh first I uh, just uh, uh champion, uh it's an honor just to be associated with you like this. I wasn't able to make your induction to the Hall of Fame ceremony, so I want to take this time to say congratulations on an awesome career. Uh, a highlight and to be able to go out and beat a future Hall of Famer and win a title in Jorge Arce. You, it, people can say whatever they want to about undefeated, out of the fighters, this and that. No one went out better than the way you did. Nobody. And congratulations on that. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. I've That's always wanted to go out and um, champions. I accomplished it. You, did, you definitely did that in amazing fashion. Uh, did you ever fight in the amateurs, uh, the Daniel Romero and um, and Johnny Tapia, since y'all were close to the same weight and same age? Yes, we did. I um, I fought uh, Johnny Johnny Tapia twice. I lost decisions, and um, me and Danny Romero, we we have fought each other. We were um, sparring partners. Oh no, kidding! See, I didn't okay. know that. Oh yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, that, that must have been some experience for you. Um, Gonzalo, <laughs> yeah, man, I mean, it builds a confidence there. Gonzalo, recognize, feel free, like I said, feel free to jump in there. Uh, Gonzalo, go ahead. I think you. Yeah, so, so Michael, I mean, growing up, I was a big fan. I'm, I grew up in Tijuana, and I knew fighters like Victor Burgos, uh, Jose El Gallito Quirino, who I started boxing and it was that was one guy you fought and knocked out in the first round because of your tremendous punching power. I even used to rock the ponytail, man, like you and Eric Morales growing up because you were, you were such a – made a big impression on me. Your fighting style, it resonated to me. And come to find out that all the, the list of accolades that you got that are second to like none, great accomplishments like, you know, on some websites you're considered pound for pound one of the – hundred greatest fighters of all time to ever have graced the planet. So that, that in itself, man, that's like re really cool stuff. And th that I can recall that I have like very fond memories, like watching your fights, you know, growing up and, and you being a guy that, that they debuted and, and being a guy that went on to become a champion in the middle of their career fighting champions and being involved in, in, in a great fight in the nineties, one of the greatest fights of all time against Humberto La Chiquita Gonzalez in that trilogy. Then later retiring by beating the guy that went on to become a four world uh, champion in, in uh, El Travieso Arce when you fought him in TJ. And those tough wars that you were involved, man, that just, it's just like I'm really impressed by your by your power, your skills, how you would utilize your legs to inch forward and get into positions to throw that that hell of a of, of an overhand right and that right straight right hand, man. So you know the first ballet Hall of Famer, and, and I, I cannot say you know. Everything else uh, that you know that, that, that I'm I'm so impressed and it's an honor that you're on this show and that we're speaking to you, man. No problem, man, and thank you for all the compliments. I really appreciate it. Hey, Umberto, no problem, man. You earned it. Um, I wanted to ask you in in regards to to that because I mean that you had the big fights, you had some where you you knocked people out or you uh, you came back from the brink of defeat to knock them out. I was watching a documentary on on I think it's on Netflix. It's called Fight World. You know, they go around the world interviewing people about their different sports. Anyway, they were talking to Umberto Gonzalez, and he he traveled to uh, Plaza del Toros where you guys fought uh, your rubber match. He was getting goosebumps just being there. Do you do you ever revisit um, places where you fought, like the Coliseum in Phoenix and all that? And do you get a, like, or even just when you remember those fights, do you start getting like a surge of energy from that? Oh yeah, any any time, any time um, you go to a fight or you know you're invited to a fight or whatever it is, and I'm I'm a big boxing fan, so uh, oh yeah, it still gives me the chills. You know, it, it was very hard. It was hard to retire, but um, I didn't I didn't want to end up, you know, being beat up all the time. And and a lot of the champions, uh, they just didn't know which, when to quit. And uh, I learned from that also. And I said, man, I can't do that. I'm not going to keep on going. I know that Arce was beating me, 
I knew Ar Arson was beating me. Had I not knocked him out, he would have he would have won a decision. So um, I said I got to leave it at that. You know, mm -hmm. it was very hard. It was very hard because I was so pumped up after the knockout. And you know, I said I'm gonna go on fighting. But you know what? I, I just thought about it a lot, and I said, you know what? I'm gonna keep it right here. I'm a retired champion, and I guarantee you I'll never come back again. Well, that's interesting, though, because the, the the promise was to your father, right? You promised that you would win a title and that you would keep a title when you like, in your last fight you would retire as a champion. I'm, you know, when you look at a guy like Bernard Hopkins, he I think he promised his mother that he'd retire after his 40th birthday, and then once he beat Antonio Tarver, he said, "You know what? I still got a little something left. Let me just stay in the game." When you look at fighters who do that. Do you sympathize with them, knowing how hard it is to leave the sport, especially w when you know you can still beat some of these younger guys? Oh, yeah. I, all the time. I I pretty much know. You know, I see all the guys coming back. You know, all the older guys, the guys that are 50 and 54, Mike Tyson, Roy Jones, everybody, you know. I respect their decisions, but uh, that's something I won't do. You know, you just never know. But for me... I think that the pleasure of a uh, retiring world champion really helps out a lot. And um, the way I went out is um, is very, very, um, very satisfying to me. I, I don't really know how to put it because I love to fight, believe me. And um, I understand where they come from. Yes, I sure do. <laughs> Yeah, it must be hard to step back. Hey, go ahead, Jay. I think you want to say something, Jay? Well, um, if you would mind, champion, uh, please take us through a little bit like the business side. Your relationship with Bob Arum. I think you went to Don King for a little bit. And uh, when you did, did you end up going back to Bob Arum before you were done? Uh, your relationship uh, with um, your managers and your, your promoters. So I think we'd like to hear that, if you don't mind. That's... Um... He's an estranged um, brother. Um, he did me wrong. He did my family wrong. And um, I didn't like that. And uh, what he did is, yeah, is terrible. To do that, it's not what he did to me, exactly what he did to me, even though it hurt. Of course it hurt. But it's what he did to my mom. When you do that to your own mother, you're not, uh, you're not human. So, you know, I Sorry, just let that go. Are you referring to your brother? I'm talking about my brother, yes. I'm talking about okay, the managing good. thing. That's, what, that, that's how I took that question. So. Well, he was, yeah, he was asking about um, Don King and Bob Arum, the fact that you went oh, there from. Oh, Don King and Bob Arum, um, they're good. They're good promoters. Um, that's all I got to say about them. They're, they're the best. Well, you know, it's interesting because I think Jay brought up a good point too in regards to because uh, you you made it at the, at the at the amateur level. I mean, you went to the Olympics. That's the pinnacle of amateur boxing, and you made it to the pinnacle of pro, uh, of pro boxing. Were there any differences between amateur and professional in the sense that was the were the amateurs more fun in a way because there was no money, there was no business mudding the waters and all that. Um, they were both fun. You know, I can't I can't say which one was was best because every fighter has a different for me i love the professionals better because it was more of my style mm -hmm. um and that's all i wanted to do ever since i was a kid just as i explained earlier uh, i had told my father he said i told him at six years old there was no way i could remember that <laughs> and, and, and i did it i did not remember he didn't tell me that Till I was 14 when I had my first fight. He goes, remember what you told me when you were six years old? And I said, no. And then he goes, you said you were going to be a world champion and retire a world champion. And I knew what he was doing. He was giving me that confidence. And I said, oh, I, I did? Well, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> and that's I remember that one. <laughs> Damn, that's, in, that's in, insane that, that you... Uh... You keep promises that way. I, I keep I say something and then two weeks later I forget about it and I don't do anything about it. Hey, by the way, we got uh, <laughs> we got uh, one of our friends over here, Mark uh, from Ireland, big fan of yours. You see, you got fans all over the world. Uh, Mark, are you there? Yes, sir. Uh, hi, hi, Michael. How are you today? How are you today? How are you doing, Mark? 
I, I'm, I'm fantastic. It's actually a pleasure to get to talk to you. So you're the, you're the main influence on why I actually watch uh, lower weight divisions. When I was uh, six years old, uh, when I was six years old, I watched a recorded tape of you versus Jorge Arce, and I was hooked on your career and went back and watched it the whole way through. And all I can say is thank you for everything you gave all of the Foy fans throughout your career because you're one of the true great legends of this sport, sir. Thank you very much, Mark. I really appreciate that. See, that's that's very nice to hear, and um, that really um, – I'm just so humble about it, and um, – it just uh, touches my heart. Thank you very much. Well, you know, oh, um, okay, go ahead, Mark. Mr. Video. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, Mark. I, I was going to ask, um, considering um, everything that you achieved in your career, and when you watch fighters today with records padding, and a lot of fighters aren't willing to take a loss because they think it's the be all and end all. How do you feel about that? Knowing all of the stuff that you went on to achieve, retiring a champion and all of the great fighters you fought from Kitty Kassem to Humberto Gonzalez. You know, it's a, it's, it's very tough for the young fighters, you know, cause right now they just want to be number one and they want to be champions and I give them that, but they got to be really careful. And uh, just just co go on about the fighting. And I know the business aspect comes into it. See, well, my, my situation was a whole lot different than everybody else. So, but I, I respect all fighters. I mean, any fighter that gets into that ring is a great fighter to me. I mean, you've got to be really dedicated, disciplined, and have that desire to be the best at your weight class. And that's what I love. Yeah, man, because listen, to make it to the to the top the way you did, it's not just uh, being smart. You do need certain other intangibles. Like you were smart and you had power and, and you had the will to do it. But not only that, but you had the will to stay consistent in the gym. Because, you know, the, 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 the word about you during, uh, during the day was that you were a hard worker in the gym. You would put your work in the gym. A lot of these fighters nowadays, they, you know, they fight and then they blow up in weight. They drink, they party. Then when they go show up to the gym, they're 20 pounds overweight and they gotta they, they go to fat camp instead of fight camp. Did you know, like, were you planning ahead knowing that, listen, this is a job in a way. I have to be responsible and professional. Or, or did you just enjoy training and the, the endorphins that come with it? I enjoyed, I enjoyed the training and I knew that if I was in condition, nobody could beat me. That's how I felt. No one. I don't care who it was. Whoever you put in front of me, you could not beat me. If I'm in condition, you cannot beat me. And that's how I felt every single fight that I fought, even when I lost. Well, I mean, that, that's what I wanted to get to in a way, I, I, in, in terms of the condition, because, you know, the stereotype in boxing is, you know, it does take, by the way, it does take a lot of uh, of muscle. You got to put some muscle in, in your shots to hit hard. Even if you already hit naturally, you do have to put some some velocity on them. And if you miss, that can take a lot out of you. Or even if you just hit the other guy and he doesn't go down, it takes a lot out of you. So you have to have good stamina. And that's what happened to you because you fought some guys that they, they were able to take it. And like, for example, there was a guy from, pa yeah, there was a guy from Panama, one of your, uh, Robinson Cuesta. I think he was from Panama. His fight is up there on YouTube, and you dropped him hard with a hook, and he, he had the spaghetti legs, and it seemed like he was going to go out. It seemed like he was going to go out the next round, but then he came back as if nothing happened. Like, How do you stay composed in that situation where you know you could end it with one shot, but you don't want to go crazy and, and blow your, your all your shots? Like, You went right back to the body. Is that something that you were just uh, accustomed to? Like, hey, let me beat these guys up for 12 rounds, see if they go? It all depended on the fighter, how, how the fighter reacted to it and how he came back. But you, the thing about, for me, is that you always have to stay relaxed in the ring. And that's where all your strength combines together. If you're relaxed in the ring when you're fighting, everything just comes together. And I explain that to the fighters that I'm, that I'm working with. You got to relax. You can't hold your breath. You can't get tense. You can't do this. Can't do that. And you know what? At the beginning stages, you don't understand that. 
because mm-hmm. you're just in there and you're all excited and you're tensed up and I totally understand it. So a relaxation and, and conditioning, being in good shape is going to help all of that relaxation to be in there and taking it. And that's another thing. you got to withstand whatever, whatever punches you're getting hit with. It doesn't matter what you're getting hit with. You got to withstand that. That's why the conditioning is is a big part of of fighting. Yeah, absolutely, man. Hey, Just, um, oh, go ahead, Gonzalo. Yeah. Michael, remember remember that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rudy. Remember that fight with uh, Jesus Chon, the 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 Chinese Mexican guy on the undercard of the Tommy Morrison Ray Mercer fight. That dude oh, was crafty, yeah. and it, I would, when you knocked him down, his legs got pinned behind his back. No, that was crazy, man. He's like. He was like Westa. He's like uh, any of those fighters that you knock down and you give him with, with a good shot and he falls real hard to the canvas and he wakes right back up. <laughs> you know you're in for a fight. And I love those. <laughs> because, I that, love those because that guy didn't get knocked out until like the latter part of his career. He only uh, got right. knocked out by TKO or cuts. He, was, he had a really good chin. That's why. Oh, yeah. I love them kind of fights, and uh, um, you got to expect that because you're not going to be able to knock everybody out. And I knew that coming into the fight game, and I know that go- going into the fight, you know, you're not going to win them all. But when you go in there, you got to be confident and saying, "Look, your ass is mine, and that's it. <laughs> plain, plain, oh, plain deal. Your ass is mine." You ain't, you ain't, you ain't doing shit to me. I'm kicking your ass tonight. That, that's, that's what I think. That was, I was always thinking like that. Absolutely. It was, it was a lot of fun. Speaking of that mentality, can you take us through what it was like in your mind fighting Chiquita Gonzalez and being knocked down two times and then having to dig deep to come back to knock out a great champion in Chiquita Gonzalez? That, that was an unbelievable fight, you know. I knew the, the first the first knockdown was Flash. Second, I mean, second knockdown, he had me hurt. He had me hurt throughout that that fifth round. And uh, but I was I was just withstanding it. I was just man. I just wanted my leg to come back together. My right leg, my right. He hit me with that right hook. I mean, pinpoint right on the button. And when I got up, I couldn't feel my right leg. I said, oh, shit, he's going to be coming at me. I got to withstand this. And what I did is I relaxed, and I let him come in. And um, right after I found my right leg, I said, oh, that's it for you. And that was it. That's interesting. You mentioned that, that the leg, because that's something, again, as viewers, we're watching the fight, and we don't know what's going on through your mind. We don't know if you're still, because you, you're conscious, but we don't know if you're all there. Because you know that happens sometimes yeah. where you're halfway like in a dream world, at, but at the same time you're conscious and still able to fight. So that's an, so which the right leg you didn't feel it. You said what was it numb or no? I couldn't. I couldn't feel my right leg for a while. Even when oh. it, after the, I got up and everything, I still I still couldn't feel it. You know the the I couldn't feel it like I had on my left leg, and I said, man, I can't feel my right leg. So oh. I, I just stood there and let him. Let, go ahead, go ahead and punch and do whatever you got to do. And I didn't let him know that. And then I, I felt it and then I said, okay, that's it. I'm coming back. Man, that takes some cold blood so, to be able to. Yeah, that's what takes- happens. Your leg, your leg falls asleep. Everybody goes, hey, what does it feel like to be to be hit, to be knocked down, to be um, wobbled? I said, first of all, you can't feel the canvas. <laughs> you know, <laughs> And then I give them an explanation. Say you sit down for a long time and you get up and one of your legs wobble. You know how that feels? If your leg falls asleep while you're sitting down and you get up uh-huh. and you, you step on the ground and, and you wobble. Uh-huh. That's what it feels like. <laughs> yeah, it happens to me all the time. <laughs> it happens to me all the time, except I'm not getting hit. I think there's a problem there. But, hey, by the way, we got to punch you. Real there. quick. Really real quick. hurts you. We got a you super get wobbled chat. by it. That's what it feels like. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, geez, That's man. why your legs wobble because you can't feel the ground. <laughs> you can't feel the canvas. 
Damn, that's insane. And by the way, shout out to Chet Collins in the chat room who just donated a super chat. He says, uh, he says, Michael, little hands of stone, Carvajal, top three, 108 pounders of all time. I love that you retired as a world champ and I wish you well, champ. All right, shout out to Chet Collins for that super chat right there. Um, it, it, it's interesting, real quick. Mr. BDA, speak, speaking, speaking on, speaking on the chin, uh, mm -hmm. Michael Carvajal, Michael, you never got knocked out, right? You only lost on cuts, right? So you, he had that no, great chin where when you I've got up all the time. I'm, I'm very proud of that. Matter of fact, I'm very proud of that as never being knocked out in my boxing career. And um, um, that's, that's unbelievable if you think about it. And um, you see great champions, great champions come back from knockouts and everything. But the fact is, you could not knock me out. And I'm proud of that. During my boxing career, I'm... So proud of that. Yeah, that's why sometimes it's it's hard to see uh, certain boxers when they're getting beat up, but they want to go the distance and then the ref stops in. It is, uh, as a fan, you feel bad for them, but then the, the, you understand the concern from the referee saying, you know what, maybe these guys think too much. But yeah, you do. You oh, guys, yeah. as, as fighters, you do take pride in, hey, I was never actually knocked out. You know what I mean? It's like, I was never counted out right. or anything. But it's interesting, though, because you fought some good punchers, and I think the only time I ever saw you hurt, because I haven't seen all your your every single fight of yours, but I know, I remember Pastrana. I think he hurt you with like a shot on the forehead. Did you expect that? Like, are those the type of shots that come out of nowhere and you go, whoa, how, what did he hit me with? They just, they just come out of nowhere. You you just never know. And I've been wobbled a bunch of times, and uh, I could remember if if. If I look back at my fights, I remember that. I can remember um, the wobbly sensation and all that. And um, I've been wobbled plenty of times and just didn't didn't show it. If I look back at a fight, so um, that that's something to be real proud of. And fighters understand. The fighters um, watching me right now, he's gonna be saying, "Shit, I totally understand what Mike is talking about <laughs> because I totally understand." If I'm watching interviews and I and I'm listening to a fighter. I said, man, I'm, I'm right with him. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you got a wealth of experience to pass on to, to people there. Uh, Mark, you had a question, I think. Okay, I thought Mark was going to say something. I, I was going to ask you, Michael, uh, on Les Gonzalo, oh, you, you got oh. something? No, go ahead, Vidian. Mark, are you there? Um, yeah, I actually did have a, a bit of a question. I um, I was wondering if you could take us back after you unified the titles uh, champion uh, against Humberto Gonzalez, and then you fought uh, Quang Sun Kim, who had a massive following, and he went to the he was at the same Olympic Games as you. And if if memory recalls, I, I think he beat one of your teammates, uh, Arthur Johnson. What was it like in that moment getting that fight? And did you feel any passion for the idea of being able to avenge your teammate from the from the Olympic Games? You know what? I was um, when they told me they were, that I was going to fight Quang Sun Kim. I said, "Oh, that's fine." He was at the Olympics. He's a gold medalist. He's at he was at 112. Okay, that's fine. I, I I'd love to fight him. And, I knew he was going to be a tough opponent. I knew he had fought Chiquita before before I had fought him. And um, he was beating Chiquita. And Chiquita knocked him out in the uh, final round, in the 12th round. And that was, a, that was a great fight. So I knew I was going to be in a tough fight. And I said, oh, yeah, let me. I want him. Go ahead. Give me him. That's my next fight. Go ahead. Put it down. I'm ready. That's a great, yeah. That's a that's a great uh, story right there, and a great uh, uh, scenario uh, uh, that that you yeah, that you yeah. find yourself in. The, so when you're fighting these type of guys, you know you got Chiquita Gonzalez. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the name of the guy you you beat for the your first title, the the Thai guy. You know those Thais, they get some. Well, Enjoy Okay, come yeah, on, what the? Kitty how, Kitty how do you guys? How do you guys memorize those <laughs> names? I can't even memorize my own for Pete's sake. Right, I, I still remember the day he won the title. Kasim. Kitty Kasim. Right. <laughs> 
All right, right, right. But listen, when you when you fight those guys and they're strong and because you know when you start your career, you're you're knocking these guys out, but then all of a sudden you go up in level and these guys, whoop, all of a sudden they, they can go, they can take it and they can dish it right back. Did you get excited? Like, ah, now I got a challenge. Like, yeah, bring him on. Like, like how did you, how did you feel about the competition level there? Yeah, I I love those kind of fights. I, I just loved it. I just I just love the fact that those fights like Kitty Kaysen, Chiquita, Arce, all of them guys, um, man, unbelievable. There were other guys that were very tough. All of them, man. It, it, it. But I love, I love those wars. I love, I love being in the war. Even though I could box, and I, I knew that I was taller than most of these guys, than most of them, and I could just box and stay away. But I love, I love to fight. And I love to, I love the end fighting. So that was just my style. I just love to fight. And I guess that's why I was, a, I was a type of fighter that it was just an exciting fight automatically. If you're there to fight, then you had a fight on your hand. You, everybody got to see a great fight if, if they were there to fight. Mm -hmm. Michael, I have a question. Uh, upon reviewing the the Jorge Arce fight, even the commentators, well, they were saying that you know Arce was winning, and you made a comment that you said that he was beating you. But upon watching the fight, you were like the ring general. You were like the ocean pushing the log, and he was like backing up. He's usually like a pressure fighter and Arce, but you were the one with your punching power, putting him against the ropes. Now he went low. He hit you with two very low body shots, and that knockout. I actually thought that it was a pretty close fight, and it could have been said that you could have been winning up until you got the knockout. What, what do you think? I thought, I, I, I thought, I, I even felt during the fight that was winning. Um, I knew I needed the knockout. I just knew that I needed the knockout, and uh, I caught him with that right hand again, and that was it. And um, if it, if it would have went to the decision. Arson would have won. But that's an interesting observation. That's an interesting observation, real quick, because you you uh, Gonzalo's right in a way. I mean, he was outworking you, but you could tell that you were the veteran in there because you were parrying the shots. If you couldn't parry them, you would take them, but you kept pushing him back, you kept being selective with your body shots. Uh, and then you finally caught him. Did you how confident were you? Because you'd done it before, you know, like people would throw a lot of shots and then eventually boom, you caught him with a shot. How confident were you that? you could land your best shot in that fight? I knew, I kind of knew that I was going to land it, that it was going to come because he was coming in pretty much with that right hand where I can let go of that right hand. I said, man, I'm going to let, I'm going to land that right hand. And you know what? I might have been just waiting for that. But to tell you the truth, I knew I was losing the fight. I said, man, I need to knock out. I need to catch him somewhere or another. But um, it happened, and that was it. But I, I give Arce all the credit. Arce, Arce was a young champion. He, you know, he would just – that was the beginning for him, I believe. That fight right there turned his whole, whole career around. He, right after that fight, he knew, you know what, I was beating Michael Carball. Hmm. I was beating yeah. – you know, that was that – was, towards the end of my career and he knew that he was beating the great champion and that's, that's what I love about Arce. I felt real bad for him after the fight. Um, he, uh, I went to his um, dress room after the fight to congratulate him because a friend of his came to my came to the dressing room and told me that Arce was very sad and crying and I, I told him I'll, I'll be over there. I'm just going to go congratulate him and let him know that he's going to be a champion again. And that's what I did. Hey, hey Michael, what, I have one, I, seen your fights, am I wrong or am I right? Like, I noticed that you're light on your feet, you got powerful shoulders, but you're light on your feet and you inch forward like, like a panther. And when you get in position, you strike like a cobra. And it's scary to look because when you see your feet moving forward, you're light on your feet, but when you set up, and you throw that one first shot to measure, and then you got the, the distance down, then you throw a hard, a hard, whether it be a left hook or a, or an overhand right. Is, is that how you do it? I, I was noticing your feet, man. Very educated. It's about, 
it's about just keeping the balance and just letting the punches come and, and not trying to not trying to knock them out because that's not always going to happen if it comes it's going to come if not you just try to win a, the decision if this guy can take it um that's what you do you know it it all really depends on the fight you know it's just about balance it's the it's, it's really balance and the natural ability just to throw the punches just naturally just relaxing and they're they're a whole lot more powerful than um you thinking about it all the time yeah i i remember watching one of your fights uh pre-title fight and um al bernstein was commentating and you had dipped one way you, you dipped over to your right and then dipped back over to your left and then he just launched a straight right hand and it landed so effortlessly and he commented about the fact that you just you were always in position and you balanced yourself well but if i may follow that up with a uh, a two-part question shakespeare said he who sheds his blood with me i shall call my brother do you do you have that relationship towards chiquita gonzalez or Jorge arce to this day and uh the second part is there any one fighter in your career near that weight class where you were at that you may have wanted to fight that didn't happen not really there's not um there's not really a fight unless you really asked me about it just as you did uh, the only fight everybody ever talks about is the ricardo lopez fight but that fight didn't materialize it never happened and i would love that fight i would have loved it i think our styles were made for each other yeah man i mean that's most definitely yeah and, but, and, and the first part of his question too was uh michael like you know when you fight these guys you're sharing something that most 99 percent of the population will never go through which is to beat up another guy and he beats you as well and you don't hate each other there's no animosity it was just because you two agreed look we're the best we're gonna duke it out how, how does what type of connection do you have with gonzalez if if at all like we, we, in terms in terms of respect and in terms of as a man oh we we respect each other we have each other's numbers it's not like we talk all the time when we see each other and um we're friends and we don't talk to each other too much uh, but every time if i see one of my opponents or anybody really um i'm cool with anybody so that's just that's just my nature though so even <laughs> even if his body doesn't like me or not hey i can't i can't help that so nice. i just stay away from him if he doesn't like me <laughs> yeah that's what i tried to do too. It, that's just the way to do it but yeah, that's... um i'm friends i'm friends with all of them all of them well, that's good to hear, man. That's good to hear. See, that's the other thing is like you see all these other fighters and they, they got to pump themselves up before the fight. So they, they start trash talking or they fight something to hate about the other guy. I mean, you know, not liking the guy is one thing because, I mean, you are going to fight him. But some of these guys, yeah. they seem to, with the internet now, they talk to each other on the internet, on Facebook and Twitter. And I'm thinking, you know, it's entertaining yeah. to a certain extent, but I don't know. It seems a little exaggerated sometimes. I don't know what you think about that. I don't, I don't know if they exaggerate or not, but you know, if they really feel that way, I can understand that. But you know, there's no, there's no need to talk all kinds of stuff before the fight. And, um, just go in there and you see what we have. We'll see when we get in the ring, then, then, um, we'll find out. You can say everything you want outside of the ring and say what you're going to do and say what you're going to do and say, Say you're gonna win. Say you're gonna knock them out. Whatever it is, you won't find out till you get in there. <laughs> well said, man. Well said. Hey, recognize you got a question or something. Uh, I don't really. Well, yeah, I do have a question, but uh, I I thought Carbajal was the man back then. Out of all the uh, the flyweights, I thought he was the best guy. That's just my opinion. Um, I thought that uh, his some of his biggest wins, like uh, obviously. Um, Chiquito Gonzalez, um, Arce at the, the very last fight of his career. But the one where he looked the most savage, where he was like, he looked like he can fight two more guys that night and knock them out, was when he beat Cuesto, when he knocked him out. At the end of the fight, where he's like, 
he he just got this look on his face and he's flexing like I I I knew I was gonna knock this dude out. <laughs> that was his most well, savage I, moment. I'll tell you that's funny because you know what? That was one fighter I disliked. Huh. <laughs> he, was, he was a talker. <laughs> he was talking too much. To he put his thumbs down to my mother and I said, Oh man, that's the wrong thing you did. That's the wrong thing. That's the wrong thing to do. And um, I had it in for him. So, yeah, I, you look sad. He was in beast mode. <laughs> I didn't have to tell him. I just said, Wait till we get in the ring. <laughs> hey, you know and what? Gonzalo and I were talking about that before you got on about how because you're a very friendly person, very approachable, and and you seem very calm too. But then you would get in the ring and like you would stare guys down after a round, or like Rick and I said, you would drop them, you would like flex and stuff. You grew up in a in a pretty rough neighborhood, right? Yes, I have. Yes, I did. So fighting. I'm still here. I'm still yeah. here. I'm still here. Right. Oh, okay. You're still too close to your roots. Uh, but still, still it's the same house, everything. Nice, nice. So growing up, then you probably fighting was a bit of a of a daily thing, or like how 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 was the fighting nature in that neighborhood? You know, it was all around. It was all around me. You know, I had my friends and everything, gangs and all that. You know, just like anyone else would grow up, um, and everybody knew. Uh, we just had a reunion. I had a lot of reunion with a lot of guys from neighborhood that are my age and everybody trips out they said damn michael you're still the goddamn same <laughs> i said what you think i was gonna goddamn change because i'm champion of the world he goes damn does everybody act like that i said i don't know man <laughs> i'm i'm just just michael man <laughs> so it's it's a, it's a trip because everybody thinks that you gotta be this and that and this as i was growing up you know, they, they would tell me all kinds of stories about, you know, and so I, was, I go, you think I didn't know that? <laughs> I knew everything you guys did. And, and I, you know, I'm glad you guys supported me. And, and, and it, it's a trip. And they go, damn, Mike, what? We just, we just appreciate you because we always seen you running while we were out there at the park drinking and all that. And I said, man, don't worry about it. I'm still Michael. <laughs> I'll drink with you guys now. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's interesting to hear that man, because also you mentioned the training and again you had to be in tip top condition I don't again I haven't seen all of your fights but the ones I've seen on YouTube man and and beforehand as well it's you you never really seemed out of breath I mean you seem tired you know especially if it's a 10th or 12th round but you oh, always yeah. had s snap on your punches what type of training did you do like can you take briefly talk to talk us through your daily your week for example a week in training camp how would that how would that go I think um you know what that's a that's a very hard question because I just let it go the way I knew you know, just the conditioning. If you're in good condition, you're gonna fight better than whoever whoever you go in there with. It's a very hard question. It's just it's just, just relaxing, man. You got to relax in there. You everybody's probably going, man. When you get in there, you can't relax because <laughs> you're so tense. But that's not true. All the great fighters. How, how many miles a day? Sorry, Michael. How many miles yeah. a day they used to run? I ran five miles, five mi five miles, um, three times, a, three times a week, and then went sprints the other three times. Ah, so, so yeah, that was it. So you would do the, the 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 jogging for endurance more than anything, and the sprinting to get that explosiveness and uh, in the ring. Right. Yeah, you know what? That that's interesting, man. Because some people say uh, the, the question is. I, I assume that your training was more quality and not necessarily qu quantity. In other words, some people will say, oh, I spent three hours at the gym. Yeah, but did you spend those two and a half hours talking to people or just, you know, looking at yourself in the mirror? Like you, I, you know I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm thinking you're the type of guy that when you went all out at something, you really dedicated yourself and, and walked away huffing and puffing. Like, is that the type of work ethic you, you, you had in the gym every day? Every day. Every yeah. day, and um, most of the time I was by myself. Most of the time I was by myself, training by myself. Um, and then when the sparring was happening, that's when the trainer 
the trainers were there. It's mm -hmm. for the sparring. I, I would do all the bag work. I'd do all that. I pretty much know that they already knew I was going to do that. They didn't have to watch over me. Mm. That's, that's, see, that's rare. How about, how about skipping rope? Did you skip rope on a regular basis? Every day, regular basis. Every day that I trained, I skipped rope. Right after I ran, I skipped rope, came back, did the bag work, then sparred. And that, that was my training. And by the way, you know, um, everybody says, everybody, well, I stand in there three to four hours. I said, don't even take that long to train. <laughs> it's true you know somebody it's true somebody told me that, that, that does, that's how go ahead go ahead yeah that i mean all them all them hours you put in there you know you want to do it right and it doesn't really take three to four hours i always say why well, don't it it didn't take me that long i said man they must have been trained or over training or something god damn because all i had to do is do my bag work, whatever it was, four mm -hmm. rounds, two rounds, six rounds, whatever it was, and 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 running and, and jumping rope. You know, that's I did that throughout my whole career. That that's interesting, man, because that's what I learned going to the to the boxing gym, where you don't need to spend three hours. You stay one hour, one hour and a half, and people say just one hour and a half. Well, do the training with me. See if you can keep up after one hour. You know what I mean? Because it's not you're you're not taking your time. I assume, right? Between workouts, like you go from the bag, boom, to the pads, to the double end bag. Yeah, and, yeah. to whatever you need to work on that day. Hey, by the you way, know, shot it's, it's pads, sparring, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Um, real. I just want to read something here from the super chat here. Um, shout out to Truth's son who says relaxation, relaxation to be able to withstand and balance from paying dues in life and in re in the ring real experience and that work gives you the eye in the tornado respect champ yeah so he's saying that when you yeah if you can go through the training and withstand that it prepares you and gives you that that thousand yard stare when you're in the ring must have given you confidence too like because like we were saying you can go into the ring and yeah okay you're tough and you can hit hard but can you do that for 12 rounds and you went in there with right. that with that confidence, right? Like, hey, I can. I'm not just gonna punch her for four rounds. I can do it for all twelve rounds. Oh yeah, yeah. That's I mean, you just gotta be there. Do your workout, whatever your trainer says. Um, he'll give you the workout. He'll give you the routine. And see when the kids start, when the young young kids start, you know, they don't believe it. You know, they go, wow. You know, they're like. That wasn't too long. I said, okay, you're going to find out later on. <laughs> and then later on, they find out and go, oh, okay, now, see, now it's a, it's a whole different story. Once they get, get to know to where all the hard work is and start to understand the hard work and you put into it, you don't have to be at the gym that many hours to work out and be in condition. Um, so you you pretty much know where, I, where I'm coming from. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Jay, I think I saw you. You want to ask a question? Yeah, well, in regards to training, you may, I, I, my speakers and my headphones blanked out a little bit ago. For a world title fight, when you were to hit the heavy bag on a certain day, how many rounds would you do in order to get ready for a 12-round fight? The, the more rounds, the this was just about everything I did. I went four rounds on the heavy bag, two rounds on the upper coat bag, one round on the speed bag, one round on the double end bag, jump rope, and ran. That was my whole routine throughout my whole boxing career. And that that could last, if, if it was just straight out, straight out, i say, all of that is about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> an hour and 15 minutes. Wow. That's, that's interesting, man. Uh, uh, by the way, just remind us when you have to, like five minutes before you have to go or how long you can still go. Cause as you can see, we have a lot of questions. We're really enjoying talking to you and, uh, that's fine. Okay. Well, don't, don't worry. Um, about it. Be, okay, don't worry uh, about champion it. BDA. Um, 
I have company at my house that I need to go back and visit. I, I took time out to, because I couldn't pass this up, uh, champion. I had to come talk to you. And thank you so much for being on. Uh, BDA request, uh, respectfully request to be dismissed. All right, Jay. Take it easy, man. Thank you for being on, man. I really appreciate it. Champion, thank you so much for your time. It was an honor. Hey, Michael, oh, I want... Oh, anytime, man. Anytime. Guys. I wanted to ask you... You guys we... interview anytime. Thank you, man. Hey, we, we got some questions from the chat here, because uh, people want to... Okay, no, question, we got a question from Bolt Hype, and he wants to know, what kind of food is the best to stay in shape? Juicing. Juicing? Oh, juicing, juice. yeah. I juice every day. But make your own juice. Don't go buy it. You buy your fruit. Buy your fruits fresh wherever you buy them. You can use a blender. You don't have to use an expensive juicer. Make your own juice. And drink, I drink what? About a water bottle full of, of juice every single morning till this day. I mean, that's all I do. That's, that, that was my diet. It's interesting. So just vegetable juice or fruit juice or all sorts of juices? Fruit juice, vegetable juice. That was it. That's interesting, man. That's interesting. I used to make uh, kale shakes with, with the kale and uh, avocado and all that. But then I realized that if you, uh, 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 kale is what they call a uh, cruciferous vegetable, meaning if you eat it raw, it starts to, uh, through your pores of your skin, it starts to smell and it gives off a weird smell. So I was walking around smelling like a vegetable. And people would tell, and you know, nobody would talk, tell me that I smell like a vegetable. It was, it was, it was yeah, bizarre, man. True, but man. so you, you was thinking really bad. At <laughs> hey, well, listen, yeah, just boil that, just for everybody. Just I ate a lot of garlic. I was smelling like garlic. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, if you, if you go to Transylvania, it, it works out. If you smell like garlic, no vampires will attack you there. Uh, another question here from Truth Sun. Shout out to Truth Son who donated with the super chat. And his question is ask the champ how he prepared his heart and his mind. Hmm. Is there a is there an easy answer to that question, Michael? Like, how did you prepare your toughness? Is that something that you were already born with, but you also added to it during training, your hard fights, your amateur fights? Through the whole training system, through the whole training thing, and just believe in yourself and have the confidence in yourself that you can beat anybody that steps in front of you. And that's the way I took it. So that, that'll be the best answer I can give you is believing in yourself, no matter what. That's a good um, point because th that's the thing though, because after so many, the reason why I mentioned the amateur fight too is because, I mean, you had, it's speaking to you and seeing your career in retrospect, it's apparent that you had the heart of a fighter. Like it's already, you either have it or you don't, but you can learn to improve that. I assume, um, during your fights, because your amateur, your first amateur fights, you were probably scared, right? Like nervous, really nervous that you can't really control it. Look, I was nervous for each and every fight I had throughout my whole career. And you got to really understand that. Mm -hmm. That's just, that's natural. If you're not nervous, then I don't know where you come from this because I, I know everybody's nervous. I mean, it, life is nervous. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it, you just got to deal with that and, and just believe that you're better. I'm going to beat this, this guy. And that's all you got. That's all you got to do is believe in yourself. Once you walk into the ring, you know, just look over to the other side of, of the ring, the other side, your opponent, and just say, "Your ass is mine." That's it. <laughs> you can say it to yourself. You don't have to spit it out to him. You can just say it to yourself. Your ass is mine, and that's it. Yep. That's how I did. Michael. Um, yeah. You're considered one of the greatest fighters of all time, uh, but how much did like you loving loving something, loving the boxing, make you better than everybody? Did you know that you had the love more than the other common man or the other fighter? That that's why you became that good. 
that's one thing that you really gotta that that's right there you got to love to fight or you got to love at what everything anything that you enjoy if you do not love it then i don't think it's gonna work but for me i loved it i love to fight i explain and and tell the kids you know the younger kids you know what you got to love it you got to love you got to take it you got to enjoy it because if you don't love it and you're forced to do it it will not work that's great that's advice right. it's true but go ahead recognize sorry i, I wanted to ask him because uh I, I liked what he talked about like being nervous for each and every one of his fights and um was he at, were, were you ever in a fight where you where you won right whether it was by knockout or you won decision that you said holy shit i got away with that one like you felt in the fight like you could have lost maybe by stoppage oh there's um there's uh you know what i have to go all the way back uh shoot i'm pretty sure there was i mean I have to see the fight itself and to realize and to see because I can't remember each and every one of them, but uh, you're always, you're, any decision, even if you know you win, you don't know what you're going to win. You're going to know if you're going to be robbed, you don't know if, if they're going to give it to the other guy or not. So that's just, that's just the way. The fight game goes and um you got to really put it to it and whatever happens you ride with it come back stronger if you lose come back, back stronger you win come back stronger going back to to the very beginning when you fought in the olympics you were very gracious how did you handle that like i would just think of myself or like i don't know just somebody else for example in that situation you're like at the biggest stage and the whole world is watching then you convincingly like outscored the guy um, percentile wise, and you were shaking up, you were shaking him to his boots. And I, uh, you know, the way you you take it is you got to be a good sport about it. I know it's hard. If I think about it, you know, in my heart, I knew I wanted to fight in at the Olympics, and that's what. Um, kept me calm i knew i won it's okay i was just so happy to represent the united states of america see i started crying i was just happy to represent the united states of america be on that podium we didn't get to hear the national anthem but i was still happy and i knew in my heart that i wanted to fight so i think that's what kept me calm Absolutely, man. Absolutely. That's something that nobody can take away from you. I mean, look, they can give the decision to the other guy, but as a fighter, you know this better than anyone. If if somebody got the better of you, it you know it. And I think, you know, I got your opponent, he knew like hey, and you know, I didn't I didn't really he probably doesn't even look at his gold medal because he probably knows, you know, there's a little bit of a sting there. But you know what? That's the interesting thing is you you went through some highs, you went through your lows, uh, you know, you, the, the highest of highs that most of us will never reach. And, but you've also had your rough spots in life and yet you keep on going just like in the, in the, in the ring, you know, things could get tough in the ring for you, but you never gave up. So that's interesting to see that you live that way, both inside and outside the ring. Um, let me just see if there's some people with other, I got a ton of questions by the way, but let me just give people, Mark, are you there? Yeah, I'm, I'm still here. I'm still here. Um, champion, I, uh, Michael, uh, I was wondering, um, watching back on your fight tape, I do a lot of film study of old school fighters, and something I noticed um, is that you have a very similar short left hook to one of the greatest American champions of all time in Joe Lewis. Hmm. And I was wondering if that, if that was something that you practiced or it just came naturally or anything. Um. I'm, I'm not, I don't even know how to answer answer that. I, I guess it just came naturally and just the practicing 
of, of the experience. You know, the experience in the ring is where you learn everything. That's where you learn. And uh, I try to, you know, people that um, are not, you know, boxing analysts or, you know, boxing experts, you got to understand that the fighter learns everything by experience. Unless you have a trainer that has the experience to give you a little bit of that knowledge, then you have a little bit of um, better experience. How about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting question because I, it's mark makes a good point about your short shots you know and i've, I've practiced it you know it's easy to practice it in the punching bag or on the mitt but when you're actually sparring and you're that close and you want to throw that short middle distance shot and the other guy whacks you with three sh short shots all of a sudden you you're not too, too keen on trying that shot again so but so you're saying it's you have to do it in sparring and in in fighting itself that's the only way uh, it can really spring out right yes it, you know Cause you don't know, you just, I, like, I didn't practice a short left hook. I knew what, when to throw it, when not to throw it. That's what I meant by that. I mean, it's by experience. It's by the experience that you get in the ring. Then you, you start to realize what you can do. You learn on your own pretty much. Fighters, a lot of, a lot of the great fighters learned inside the ring. That's where they learn. Everybody thinks they learn by their trainer, but you don't. You don't learn by your trainer. You learn by the experience inside the ring. That's where you get the greatest, greatest boxing knowledge that you can get anywhere. Mm -hmm. In regards to the Joe Lewis, the that middle distance shot. Did you watch? Because this ties into another question from people, somebody in the chat room. Did you watch tape? I mean, did you ever watch Joe Lewis tapes and say, "Ah, oh, this is something I can try"? Or like, what was your experience with? Uh, Old fights and rewatching. Oh, them. Yeah. I I have watched I have watched a bunch of fights. Um, I watched those left hooks by Joe Lewis. I watched everybody's um Ray Robinson's everybody's the right you know left hooks right hands everything and and you got to watch all fighters. All fighters have different kind of style of left hooks, different kind of style of right hands, different uppercuts, different different sorts of punches. There's so many punches that you can bring up that you don't even know. That, that it just, I'm telling you, it's experience. It's experience like of that, being Like the left there. hook, chopping down, like the one you got Jesus Chon, you chopped it down. That, that was a, how you waited yeah. and you just chopped down with it. That was bad. Nice and short at the right time. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> you got to the right at the right time. And, and, just set him up for it. Well, that's interesting because that's another thing I wanted to give you credit for because there's a lot of punches out there. That's the other stereotype is sometimes they wait too much for the perfect shot or they headhunt. You you would hit them in the body, to the shoulders, to the forearms because you knew, hey, at some point, this is hurting them. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, I'm not tickling them. I, I must be doing some sort of damage. Was that your mentality too during the fights? Like, yeah, I'll just hit you wherever I can. And if I let my hands go, eventually either you go down or you go home feeling like a, like you just went through, a, you got hit by a truck. What was, is that the type of mentality you went in there with? Pretty much. I just went in there with the mentality to win. And uh, whatever came about, you wouldn't know because you don't know your opponent. And I never, I never um, studied uh, my opponents. I never, never, I, I let my trainer do all that. He just study them and, and I just take it as it comes and I adapt to it. I would adapt to it really quick. So um, that's something else too. You know, when you look at a fighter, you can look at, at the mistakes he's making, but he's not going to do the same mistakes that he does with somebody else that he's fighting. Mm -hmm. so you gotta be careful with that yeah that's true that's true it can be a double-edged sword that um also i wanted to because we're talking a lot about your power and you know the way you would go at fighters but you could also box because when uh, gonzalez tried to box you from the outside in the last two fights you guys had you didn't go berserk you, you didn't chase him around the ring you actually would like gonzalez said you would something he would move 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 and then he would try to come in and then you would step back 
and try to counter him. So there was a lot of uh, intricate things going on in there in terms of boxing and, and chess. Do you think people uh, sometimes don't give you credit for your boxing skill or do you think you showed enough to, hey, look, I, I was the complete total package in there? I don't know. I accept any kind of credit I get. So, <laughs> so I'm the same way. Just, <laughs> I'm the same um, way. Just give know, me my credit, man. Yeah, no, it's okay. Um, that's how I, that's how I went about. And uh, now that I have all the experience and everything, and what I've learned, that's what I want to give to these kids who want to who want to come in the in the gym. And learn how to fight and that's that's what i give them all the knowledge that i learned mm -hmm. and may may they perfect that and I, i try to perfect it with them and make them make them you know here's the way you throw with your hips and everything and uh and pretty much um that's they're gonna learn they're gonna learn once they get in that ring and they'll learn all the experience and then they'll start to say man now i know Now I know what you're talking about. <laughs> that that's going to come about because that's what happened to me. So um, I just want to make them better, make them better at it, make them better than I was at it. That's what my goal is for these kids now. Now that's good to hear, man. That's good to hear. Uh, by the way, uh, do you have a Facebook and Twitter page, right? Do you have anywhere where people can follow you if they want to find more, follow your your what you're doing there in the gym and all that? It's uh, Michael Carball, six times. Wait, now, I'll let Laura take care of all that because you know, let her. I'll let her take care of that. Because the Facebook is Michael Michael Carball, Carball with the Ring Magazine cover as the profile picture, the and the Instagram is Michael Carball underscore official. You guys are dynamite. <laughs> well, listen, we're, we're going to be posting that uh, information on the description of the video, and I'm, I'm actually going to uh, surf the web right now so we can see it on screen. But meanwhile, I'll let the other guys, because uh, I've been talking a lot. I don't know, if, guys, if you have any questions for Michael, please feel free to jump in whenever you want, man. Don't let I just want to say I follow Michael Carvajal already on Instagram. Oh, no kidding. Yes, I do. And he's got the uh, Ring Magazine uh profile with him in it that's great right. I, I, follow, i follow him as well um i follow him as well the other day he put up a photo of him and uh, marvin Hagler, and that was really touching um champion can you uh give us your thoughts on the recent passing of marvin Hagler? what was that again i'm sorry i was wondering if you could give us your thoughts on the recent passing of uh marvin Hagler. Oh, um, man. I, know that, uh, I know that you met him. I was very, were. Marvin Agler, uh, oh, that was, that was very sad. Hey, he was a uh, real good, real good, I mean, great champion, great champion, and great person. Um, I, I've met him throughout the years at the Hall of Fame, and um, just unbelievable. He had a great career. I, I loved him as the person that he was, and... Um, It was very sad to hear, very, very quick. I mean, he was only 66, and um, all my blessings to his family. Marvin, you're a great, great champion, great person. Thank you for everything. Well, well said, man. Yeah, I mean, he was one of those. And I mean, I'm pretty sure you can relate to the guy because you were, you were cut from the same cloth. Uh, not only the skill level, but I mean, the, the accomplishments in the heart. Um, Anybody else, guys, like recognized uh, Gonzalo? I know yeah. you're reaching. Yeah, we had a, a great fight with uh, Estrada and Gonzalez, and uh, I honestly feel that you could have knocked these guys out after anywhere after like the eighth or ninth in deep waters. You had the power to do that. You hit harder, in my opinion, than the Rungvisai, a guy from Thailand. Man, what do you think about that fight? And what do you think about those fighters? I, you know, I um. Thank you for that. Uh, it's, I think about there's a right now, right now, my favorite fighter is Mikey Garcia, just by his style, just the style that he has. And uh, I like a lot of guys out there. I like a lot of guys, but 
he got to remind me if I got to see them fight, and um, I watch them all the time, man. And if I see a guy that I really like, um, I always mention him. And that was that was Mikey Garcia. I just loved his style, the way he fought. Um, his his style was nice, you know. It was it was nice, sharp. If you see a lot of fighters, um, I like their their punching abilities, like Sugar Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran, Marvin Hagler, all them guys. If you look at the way they punch, they have a different kind of punching ability. Their punching ability, like a sharp punch. I mean, it's just really sharp and nice. Everything's nice about the right hands, the left hooks, their uppercuts, everything. And, and that's what I look for. And that's what I love. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, it's, it's it's punching like that the way you do with balance, which brings me to, hey, that just it reminds me because I I'm, I was looking uh, through your social media page and I I put it up on the screen as I was watching it. Do you ever think of because uh, I know you're a busy guy, but do you ever think maybe starting a YouTube channel and just posting small clips and snippets of of because that's what the, it's becoming a big thing on YouTube where trainers they they show little uh you know five minute videos on how to throw a left foot kind of throw a right hand what better person to teach them than you have you ever thought about maybe showing us some some of the behind the scenes over at your gym i think that pretty much um a lot of people do it at the gym so I, i'm surprised you haven't seen any of it no but i mean but, I, I, a youtube channel because it's instagram and twitter it's oh, one thing but yeah no i never thought about it but um as it goes on you know that's i really don't ever um Think about it. Whatever comes is going to come, and and I really don't want to think about the YouTube and all that stuff. Um, I think it's great though, but I never thought about training, you know, or having a channel or training channel or anything like that. No. But thank you. That's a great idea. Just in case I come up with one, I'm just joking with you, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really, man. Gotta, I I'd subscribe right away. I'd subscribe right oh, away. If you, yeah, I'd subscribe right away if you had a YouTube channel and you like a five minute video on how to throw a left foot, how to throw a right hand. You know, that's it. Oh, would cool. do. Cool. But yeah, that's, in, that's in terms of the training, because you're you're there. Are you there every day at your gym or? I'm there every day. Damn. Every day. Every day except Sundays. We got Sundays off. Yeah, you got to take some time off at some point. Do you ever get yeah. frustrated when you see people go, because you must have people come up to you and go, hey, man, can you train me? Because, you know, you're Michael Carvalho, do you train me? And then they, they talk the talk, but then they they don't train like you did. Do you ever get frustrated? Like, oh, how come you're not working hard? Don't you get it? No, I don't, I don't get frustrated. I just watch. And then I'll know. Because, you know, once, once they get into the gym, you'll know right off the bat. Some of the guys, you get so much good, talented guys, but once they start working in the gym, or once they start sparring, that's when you really find out. Once they start sparring, then you'll really know if they want it or not. Mm -hmm. Because more than likely, once they start sparring, I say, well, I'm going to see who's going to show up. Person who don't show up, I say, uh, that's that's who's gonna stop. That's who's gonna go. That's where guys that have not had the experience sparring or any of that stuff, they just automatically quit. So well, I don't get frustrated um, in training or anything like that. I know if you want it, and I know if you don't. I can tell right off the bat. I don't know how I have that, but I just know. So I, I have all the patience in the world to to help out a kid that, that wants to fight and show them everything that I've that I've learned, mm -hmm. and um, that's what I do. Yeah, probably having been in there with so many contenders and champions, you 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 probably know, right? Like, all right, this guy, he's the real deal, and this guy, ah, eh, a little soft, a little soft. But, uh, well, you know, you don't pay attention to those guys because you don't know. You you just never know. But the way you're going to know is they'll quit. 
just about, they they just won't show up at the gym anymore. That's when that's that's when you they just don't show up. And <laughs> that's a good point. I just leave it at that. Hey, Michael. Michael, you you said that that in sparring, uh, Danny Romero dropped you or knocked you out. I don't know, but in sparring, was that the other guy that used to hit really really hard? Was that him or Augie Sanchez, like a bona fide puncher? Was that Danny Romero? Danny Romero could punch. He could punch. Nobody ever knocked me down or knocked me out in sparring. <laughs> they couldn't do it at the fight. They couldn't do it in sparring. I had all that gear on. Um, no, no. Um, no, nobody, nobody. I mean, Danny could punch, and that that was it. He could punch. He could fight. He could. He Danny. Danny Romero had it all, man. I I love Danny. Me and him still conversate every once in a while, just like all all the other fighters. Um, that me and we conversate a little bit. Uh, so well, Johnny Tapia, you made Mexico ahead. Phoenix kind of like not the same. Your friend, Michael. You, you broke up, that? Gonzalo. You, Gonzalo, you broke up. You want to repeat the no, question, please? I, I was going to say, I was gonna ask, would, uh, Johnny Tapia. You fought him. You said, was he your friend? Did you get along with with Johnny? I've I've gotten along with all of them. Oh, good. With Johnny, I got along with Johnny all the time. Good, that's good to hear, man. Hey, by the way, fellas, uh, recognize Sir uh, Mark if you want. Oh, Mark dropped that. If you want to jump in, because I'm going to take some questions from the chat here. Um, first of all, Titone says, "Give Carvajal a shout out from a big fan in Toledo. Thanks for many great boxing nights." All right, shout out to Titone. Uh, Uncle Burnt apostrophe in the chat. He has a question for you about uh, current boxing. He says, "What do you think of Naoya Inoue, the current champ at uh, 108, 22 pounds right now?" I want the titles. I I like what I see in him. I I love what I see in him. I think he's very very talented. You recognize the uh, intensity in his and and his work ethic as well, right? Oh yeah, I I I can see all that. You know, I I just seen him that uh, one time, and um, he looked impressive to me. I would love I would love to see more of him. Well, yeah, well, at 122, if he moves up to 122, it's going to get interesting. Uh, well, he's at 118 right now, though, right, guys? I think still, he's still at bantamweight? Or? Yeah, I think. I, I forget. At this time of the night, at 10, it's 1021 p.m. over here at uh, in, in the Eastern Eastern uh, time. Uh, I got more questions here. Uh, ask him if it was Gonzalez. Okay, yeah, so St. Brit in the chat wants to know who hit you the hardest and whether it was Chiquita Gonzalez or who who hit you the, when you felt, whoa, I don't want to take that shot again. That was Kid Kasem. Kid Kasem. Kid right. Kasem. Oh, man, that guy. See, the thing about him, he had, he had a great right hand. It was his jab. His jab was unbelievable. I thought I was getting hit with right hands. I went back to the corner. I said, man, he keeps hitting me with that right hand. Michael, that's a jab. <laughs> I said, what? I said, shit, I got to get his ass out of here. <laughs> Damn. But uh, yeah, Kitty Kasem could hit. He was the strongest puncher um, with Chiquita. And uh, both of them guys could hit, but Kitty Kasem's were, were just a little bit, just different. I mean, everything that he was hitting me with, I was like, damn, this guy, he he was a big he was a big hundred and eight pounder. That guy was probably biggest and strongest that I fought. Man, that's interesting, man. That's interesting, especially with those like people don't really understand, right? That when when you're wearing eight ounce gloves, you're punching each other in the in the cranium, the face, the nose. Like you, you it's it's not like it's having sixteen ounce gloves where you get a little bit more cushion. Um, you you yeah. must. How did you feel the next day after your fights? I mean, most of them, you knocked those guys out, but there were some fights where you went 8, 10, you know, or you went the oh, distance. Yeah. Did you? I was sore. I mean, I'd wake up sore. I'd be like, <laughs> I could barely move. I, I'd wake up out of bed. I'd, ah, ah, something, something was hurting in my body. But, um, you know, I miss those days. But do I miss the soreness? I don't <laughs> think so. I don't miss them days getting hit. <laughs> Damn. But you know, I always say you gotta take it. 
you got to take it, man. But you got to go through that. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's it's the it's it comes with the territory, as Floyd Mayweather would say. Um, Hawker Mustang in the chat room says, "What boxer ever got on your nerves the most?" It had to be Cuesta. Cuesta, right? Yeah, you did that. Yeah, you said it was. It was. It was Cuesta. He just talked way too much, way too much. Uh, just all, all kinds of shit, and. When you do that to my mom, I'm sorry. Yeah. So that's the worst. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. There was a criminal profiler for the FBI. And one thing he said is when he was talking about interrogating serial killers and all that or, or suspects, he says, everyone has a rock. Meaning the, even the coolest guy out there, there's always somebody that's going to get under their skin. It's just the way they talk or the what they do. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's normal for even the most... Uh, cold blood guy to, to go, you know what, this guy, something about him brought me the wrong way. Um, what was I going to, oh yeah, wait, so I wanted to ask you too about your teammates, your Olymp Olympic teammates. How was that traveling to South Korea and being with all those great American amateurs and not knowing really who's going to make it, who's not going to make it. And then in hindsight, you see Roy Jones, Riddick Bow, Ray Mercer, like how, you get anything interesting, any interesting stories about that, that time in Korea? Yeah. Just being there, just being there with everybody and, and as many golds we want and silvers and bronze. I think we were the, I think our team was the best out of all of them, including 76, because that we're always getting compared to them. Mm -hmm. Even they want more gold medals, but we want more medals overall. And um, it was just unbelievable. Um, being at, at the Olympic Games there. I mean, it, and it, it's an experience you can't really describe. I mean, it, it brings chills. It brings, it brings chills to me every time, you know, someone asks me about that. So now you know, now you got a sensation of how I feel, you know, it brings <laughs> chills all the time you talk about it. You know, it, it's, it's a great feeling. Great, great. Hey, did you did you train in the same facility with those guys either in the United States or once you were in Korea? Through, throughout our um, Olympic time, you know, during our trainings for the Olympic Games, yes, yes, we did. And did that make you yes. step up your? Did that make you step up your game? Like, all right, now I'm with the cream of the crop here. You know, I'm I'm the best, and I'm with the best. Like, would you train harder? Did that motivate you more? Or, of course, always always motivated me um it just everything about it of course we always wanted to be better than than each other and we supported each other and uh, that's just the way it is it's automatic that's yeah, it's insane, man. I mean, must must have been something. So you like the impact of being there was not lost on you. Like you knew the the the, the gravity and the importance of holy snap. I'm I'm over here now. I'm with the best. Damn. I'm with the best. <laughs> must now be we gotta take care of this world. Now we gotta take care of everybody else. <laughs> and we. Yeah. yeah, you can't buy that's, that, man. You can't. You can't buy that. Jonathan hey, Murison in the... BDA. Oh, go ahead, Gonzalo. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, okay. I was going to ask him, you, you mentioned something to me that, that Michael, that you read that he had like a chick, uh, that they made a gym in his house where they used to keep the chickens. Oh, yeah. Was that true, though, that you used to train in your backyard? Was it uh, when you first started training in your yeah. backyard? Was it a converted chicken coop or what was it? Did you have chickens back there? It was, it was a garage. It was a... It was a a tent garage in the back and um we um my strange brother um built a little ten by ten ring in there and that's where i used to train the bag just basic stuff and that's where i used to train at man that's hardcore man that's hardcore especially now we're certain places in the country right now are locked down uh gyms are shut oh, yeah, down yeah. Oh yeah, see in that tent garage, we it, you know how hot it gets over here. It was at least five, six, ten degrees hotter in inside the gym. Mm -hmm. If it was a, it was 115 out here inside the gym. It was 120. 
<laughs> so I, I just loved it. That's why I love the heat. Because I just got used to it. I just love that heat. That's insane. That's, that's why I always thought fighters from Mexicali or, or Sonora were good fighters like uh, Chavez. Not, like even Andy Ruiz right now, you know, because of the heat, did that contribute to you uh, excelling as far as your conditioning growing up in uh, Ferry, Phoenix, Arizona? Do you think? Oh yes, oh yes, yes. I mean, it's totally, totally. I mean, that helped. That helped out a great deal because you, you're under all the lights and there everything, and a lot of people don't realize that. But when you're in that ring, it's it's a lot hotter in the ring than what it is outside outside of it because all the lights are on you and that makes it hotter but i loved it because i was already used to that so i loved it yeah yeah i mean yeah training in the heat there must be nothing like well it, you you guys are lucky over there in phoenix arizona it's because it's dry over here where i'm at up in canada when it gets it's the summer it gets humid oof that it, it's heavy man heavy but I mean, when when you're running though, the sun is hitting you right there in the fucking the skin. That that must be tough though. Yes, yes, it is. It it is. A lot of people can't deal with it, but um, it it just I knew it would make me in great condition to fight, and I loved it. See, that's the difference between a what the, the difference between a contender and an all time great because the all time great actually thrives. <laughs> in the heat and with the hard work whereas other people go you know what nah, it's a little i don't need to run this much you know what i mean it's like i'm i'm good enough i you know that's the difference it's that little difference there that makes the the, the great champions um real quick because i want to ask i want to ask you people because uh, there's a lot of questions from the chat and i don't want to miss them otherwise people are going to kill me afterwards uh ask him <laughs> somebody oh sh hold on i was a question okay yeah so jonathan Mercy in the chat wants to know how fast was roy jones because you, you, you trained alongside with him in the Olympic team. Well, Roy Jones is the fastest on the whole team. So <laughs> you know where that is. Roy Jones is always fast. Um, he did everything fast. Roy Jones unbelievable, man. He is unbelievable. Yeah, he must have been, man. I mean, one of the fastest to ever do it. Uh, Jim McDonald has an obscure question. He says, BDA, no, ask no, him. No, no. What's that? No. No, no, no. Okay, okay. Well, you, 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 you go ahead, Mark. I think I know where you're getting at. Um, just don't ask that question because it's, yeah, yeah. it's a joke. All right. Um, but um, uh, champ. Um, I was wondering. Um, I, I, when I was doing some research, and I was looking at Ring Magazine Fighters of the Year. Um, you won it in 1993, and to this day, you are still the only fighter who ever won that below 118 pounds. What does that mean to you? Well, that means a lot, you know, just to look back, look back at it, you know, it, during the time I was um, coming up, I didn't know all of it, all the stuff, you know, nobody ever knew the flyweights, junior flyweights, um, you know, no one, no one knew, knew the flyweights, and I, I never knew that. But as I was fighting, I started to know, man, I didn't know that. So it means a whole lot, you know. A lot of people, you know, they tell me that I'll open up the doors for the lighter weight classes. And if I did, great. You know, that's a great accomplishment. And um, that's, that is very, very nice to hear that them kind of things absolutely man great question mark great and thank you for giving me the heads up on uh on jim mcdonald he's a very big coronation fan apparently he doesn't realize that not everybody's a not everybody watches uh british television um but i want i wanted to ask you uh well I, gonzalo i don't know if you still got more questions man i got a ton but you, you uh, maybe I'm, li I'm listening you go ahead BDA. I'm, well, I'm listening I'm, I'm, I'm paying attention well michael maybe 10 more minutes because we've been talking to you for an hour over an hour and i don't want to i don't want to keep you too long i mean uh, we know you're don't worry i i i'm free all right hey, by don't the way what type, what type of chair is that looks like a very comfy chair <laughs> well, I, don't <laughs> I don't know it must be comfortable huh 
<laughs> looks like a yeah. You know, I, I'm just relaxed. That's it. So I'm good with your questions. <laughs> okay, cool. I'm something of a connoisseur of uh, chairs, so the, the more comfortable they get, I can probably oh. guess the brand. Um, <laughs> somebody sure. says here. Hold on, I'm, lo I'm looking for more questions from the chat. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, so people want to know about uh, current fighters. Actually, I got a okay. Roy Jones. Some people are saying Roy Jones. He likes. Oh yeah, what type of music do you like to listen to? Or did you? Did you? Uh, were you one of those guys that needed to listen to music too? By the way, during training, or could you do without it? You guys won't believe what I listened to when I was training. I listened to Motown. I, I listened to all the oldies. I listened to oldies when I was training. So like the Temptations oh, wow, and that's cool. all of them. Yeah, it's good music. To, to, it's good music to train to, man. You probably know all the oldies, right, Michael? You probably Pretty know much. all the oldies just spending time at the gym. <laughs> just training with the oldies. That's it. You I was need... like that because every time, every day I used to cross the border from TJ to San Diego, and my mom would play the oldies. So I'm like the same in a way. <laughs> I well, love oldies. That's also the Chicano culture, right, the Gonzalo? The with the when you're playing some when you're in the low rider and all that, you play some. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a cholos. That's what the cholos all listen to. Yeah, there's some good YouTube chat. There's some good YouTube channels where these people they they convert the vinyl to uh, digital and they got thousands of songs. There's one guy called. Well, I don't know if I should name him though, because maybe they'll, they'll take him down for <laughs> putting all that music on YouTube. But yeah, if you can find them, I mean, just write some of your favorites, and I, I, you got the Chicano like graffiti on the on the on the photograph, and you you'll be able to find them. So, hey, name some of your top five then Motown artists. Like, who 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 are your favorites to listen to? Man, there's so many of them. I can't I can't even put it's it's all of them. Huh? But I'm just gonna say nothing but oldies. If you, I could just. I used to go to sleep to oldies, so that's how that's how much I listen to them. Yeah, I get you, man. It's it's great music. It's very relaxing, depending on on the the song you choose. It's, it's also uplifting as well. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's, 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 that's why I, I thought, that's why I thought you guys were going to be surprised that I train to oldies because they're not they're not the kind of mu they're not a training music um, supposedly to. Other fighters, other fighters wouldn't be able to train to that. You know what it is though? It's because it, it makes for good background music too. Sometimes, like like Mark said, it's energetic, but it's not too much. Because I remember Bernard Hopkins once said that he doesn't like to listen to music during training because he says if you needed to pump you up, what are you gonna do when it's not there? That that was his mentality. So I, I'm assuming that if if you're playing something that's not too apparent. You know what I mean? It could work. But then again, all, all these, some of these oldies from Motown, they can be quite engaging. So, I mean, they're, it's I hard to... I pick up from that video that he said that, um, remember when he's talking about that you need to be patient, not to get overly aggressive when you're trying to throw your punch, just let it go. Maybe mm -hmm. that benefit them in, such, in, in a way, because I find that interesting. Patience, right? And so, that's all you need. Patience. And, and just be smooth. Relax. Just let let them let them punches come, and um, you're gonna learn that. That's what I see. That's the main thing with these kids. With the kids nowadays, every time if one comes up to me and he goes, "Man, I want to be famous, and I want to make a lot of money, and I want to do this, I want to do that," I said, "Do you love Do you love to fight?" And he he'll he'll stop right there. Hey, I Michael, it's, it's you like uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, your friend, he says, Perdidas existen, when you let the hand go, and you're not thinking about throwing it with force, that's when they really come out fast and powerful, right? Something like that? That's true. That's true. That's the, that's the, that's where all the power comes from. Once you relax and let it, just let it go. The way it's going to come, that power is going to be there. But you do got to show them with the hits you know it's interesting man because we had a we have a guy here on this show that he, he's friends with mickey ward he grew up with him actually and, and they would box together and i talked to him oh nice nice and he tells a story of how he was sparring one day 
Oh, I'm hearing echo there. Okay, he was sparring with Mickey Ward, uh, not with Mickey Ward, but they were they had sparred on the same day, and they're in the locker room. They're taking, you know, they're they're changing to go out or whatever. And our friend, he says that he was beat up, right? He feels the the strain, he feels the muscles, the the, the bumps, and he goes. He asked Mickey Ward. He said, uh, "Do you ever get used to this? You know, the pain." And Mickey Ward, without missing a beat, said, "I don't know. I kind of like it." So like he, that he, it wasn't even an issue for him. Like he came, he was part of the of the life of the boxing. Is that the same thing you look at it, and is that what you look for in the guys you train? Like, do you want to see if they actually enjoy that? Right, you got to see if they they enjoy it, and they're not. See, all the kids I have right now are are very young. They're sixteen, sixteen years old, thirteen, fourteen years old. So. They're they're at the beginning stages, and you got to have a lot of um, a lot of patience with them, so they they learn, and you got to be, you know, just calm with them, and and not overdo it, and just because if they don't if they don't like it, um, you know, a lot of parents a lot of parents will force them to do it, and um, you can't do that. You got to see how the kid reacts to it how does he if he wants to do it and that's the way i look at if you if you really want to fight if you just want to come and train that's fine too i mean you can learn that way too and i teach him just about the same way it doesn't matter if he doesn't want to fight or not well, I, as long as i give him that confidence in himself and and make him believe in himself and then he'll be a better person absolutely that's important Absolutely. Great. Very well said, man. Uh, speaking of the music, a Paruqua on, in the chat room wants to know if the music helped you with your rhythm in boxing. Um, I don't know if it helped me with my rhythm or not. I just, I just like the, like the music. My rhythm came about just punching the bag and, and moving around and just practicing like that. I don't think it was music. Mm -hmm. uh, I just love that music. And oh, that's, what I, that's what I trained to. That's <laughs> what I always uh, worked out to. I'm going to give you a couple of bands and you tell me if you listen to them. Now, these weren't exactly officially Motown, but how about the Chai Lights? All of them. <laughs> All right, so the Chai Lights. How about yeah. the Dells? Great. All of them. All of them. All right. So I think I think. Tell me all of them. Yeah. I'm just going to say, <laughs> yeah. say yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 Give me all of them. I wish we could play yeah. some, but you know, YouTube copyright, we ain't playing around with that. Um, Mark, go ahead, man. I think you had a question. Yeah. I wanted to ask, uh, my, we, if people, we had a debate on the panel a few weeks ago to do with Lennox Lewis and um, Riddick Bowe and why they never fought and who, who people talk, whose fault it might have been. I know you were part of the same Olympic team as Bo and uh, when Lennox got the victory over him in the final. What were your thoughts on that fight never happening in the professional game? What was my what? What were your thoughts on that fight never happening in the professional game? Oh I'm fighting. I, really, I didn't get that. I'm sorry. Riddick Bow and Lennox Lewis, they never fought. And uh, he wants to know your opinion on... on Because you, you, you oh. are on the same Olympic team with Bo. Why did you think about that? The, the, the shame of that the fight never happened? Oh, man. I, I thought that fight should have happened. I thought... You know, me, I'm always going to be biased, biased with Bo. Because he's my teammate. But I thought it would have been a, a great fight. A great fight. Style-wise and everything, if, if you look at it, and I watched it, I know um, Lennox stopped him at, at the Olympics. But when Bo, as he became world champion, and when he was right there, I don't think anybody could have beat Bo. Bo could fight inside. He could fight from the outside, at, anywhere. And I, I don't believe... And it's my opinion only. And I, I believe Lennox and Lewis is a great fighter also. But I just thought him and Bo would have fought at the time when they should have fought. When I when I thought they were getting close to fighting. If that would have happened, 
I think Bo wins by late round knockout. Damn. I agree with you. I agree. I thought if they would have fought when they were supposed to fight, he would have won. Reddick Bo. No, but that's because you're, you're biased towards against British fighters, recognize. Come on, man. No, he's, I thought you were going to say I'm, I'm biased towards New York fighters. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that too. That's why I said I was biased, but by their style, I believe Bo would have won that fight had they fought at that time. For every no. reason he broke down style and boxing wise, I, I agree. There you go. I mean, it's hard to argue against the, with, with the champ, man. Um, yeah, well, you know, so it, it's interesting, though, those, those Olympic teammates. Somebody wants to know in the chat room, they want to know if Campos Vasquez in the chat room wants to know, did you see Roy Jones after he lost, well, in, in parentheses, when he lost against uh, in the Olympics, did you see him in the locker room? Did you talk to him afterwards? Like, well, what happened there? Did you interact with him at, at any point afterwards? I can't really remember. I can't really remember. Um, when I came home, I seen the, after the interview and everything, after the, um, after Roy Jones had lost. But, you know, I was not in Roy Jones. Um, the, to me, I mean, to everyone in the whole world, my fight, my fight was a lot closer than Roy Jones. Just, um, I mean, did everything he could do, but knock him out. Roy won that decision fair and square, so I can't be in Roy's shoes and I can understand how upset he was about it, man. He just, he went off and, and I, just by being there and seeing what Roy did and to get a decision the way, man, that was unbelievable. I couldn't even believe it. Yeah. I said, man, when Roy just beat the living hell out of the guy every single round. I don't know how they gave it to that guy. He was a travesty. So I understand where Roy is coming from. Yeah, he was a travesty, man. It really, it, yeah, it really, was. yeah. Because you train so hard, and then all of a sudden, three guys, or I don't know how many they had there at the time, but you know, yeah, they're, they're the was. ones that decide. Oh no, actually, no. You, we, we're not going to give you the win. Hey, speaking of of wins. This is a question I always ask, like to ask professional boxers. Which version of you, of one of your fights throughout your career, which version of you would you pick if you had to fight any all the other boxers in the history of, of the sport? Like, what was the best Michael Carvajal out there, in your opinion? Mm, I say right after the kid case and fight. All right. Is there is there a specific... That period you felt like Nobody could, you could, nobody no. could, that was the best Michael. All right. All right. Damn, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Well, listen, Michael, uh, I think we're going to call it a wrap for the moment. I don't, we don't want to keep you here unless anybody else has more questions. Um, Gonzalo, I think you. Um, hey, what do you think good. about David Benavides? He just gave you credit that you're the greatest fighter. I mean, you're one of the greatest of all time, but he said from Phoenix. What do you think about David Benavides? I know he's from Phoenix. I love the way David fights. <clears throat> I love the way David fights. I give him, I give him, I think he can beat Canelo. Oh, thank if you. If Canelo fights, if, if, if David fights him, the way Canelo likes to fight, David has a good style and he's strong. And if he fights like that, I mean, fight to fight with Canelo, he has a great chance. Of beating Canelo, I believe. That's my opinion. Let me ask him this wow. one question. Just one more question. The reason I feel that De uh, Benavides has a good shot of beating Canelo. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No, sorry, go ahead. Because it's, it's echo. No. It's, we're getting. Yeah. All right. So um, the reason I give um, Benavides a good shot to beat him. Right, I'm not saying he definitely will, but I give him a good shot. It's because I've since Canelo's gone up to 168, so, uh, you know, north of the middleweight division. I noticed the fighters he's fighting are not that he's too strong for them. I don't think that's going to be the case with Benavidez. So it's going to come down to skills because Canelo is beating these guys on pure strength. And I think if it comes down to skills, meaning he's fighting a guy 
who he's not going to overwhelm with strength, if it's, it comes down to skills, that's where I give him the good shot of winning. What do you? What's your take on that? Yeah, I believe I I believe what you believe. Uh, that, like I said, you know, Benavides could stay there and fight. I know Benavides has a longer reach and everything. If Benavides gets in great condition, great and and, and have Canelo right now, I think Canelo has a little bit too much skill. Just, but if you get David in the great condition with David's power and his style, it's going to be a fight. Believe me, it will be a fight. What advice would you give Benavides, seeing as how he, he seems to have a lot of weapons, but he's never actually fought anybody in the, at the level of Canelo, when you got a guy like that, like Venavides, who's never fought anybody like Canelo, but who has talent and tools, what advice do you give him? Is it mental more than anything at that point? Or yeah, I think um, as long as David believes in himself and he knows, I I believe I believe he he can beat Canelo. He has uh, Canelo just has more experience on him, but. You don't know because David, all of a sudden, he knows he's going in there against Canelo, so he's gonna he's gonna train his ass off for it. He'll mm. be in great condition, and if he is, I won't be surprised if he beats Canelo. Well, there you have it, fellas. He's speaking. He's saying Benavides is a great show. Hopefully, it happens because I mean Canelo, he still has to get past Billy Joe Saunders, but and Benavides might fight Kelly Plant, hopefully himself one of these days. Hopefully we see that uh, that one happen. Um, also, the other, uh, other question people want to know is which fighters did you uh, like to watch during your heyday, around your time, when you were an active fighter? Shoot. Man, I was watching everybody. Um, I, loved, I loved all of them. You know, all, the, all them guys. Man, if you, you want to go back, I have to... I had to have a list of all the fighters. Um, they, they were fighting at the time I was fighting. You're talking about Chavez, Riddick, Bo. Um, you know, I was being compared to these guys. And I was like, man, that's great. You know, it, when I look back, I say, wow. Wow. I was right up there with all these guys. With all, all them guys. And, uh, and I was just a junior flyweight. That's <laughs> That's why everybody goes, hey, Michael, man, you opened up the doors for us and this and that. And I said, you know what? Thank you. I still don't believe it right now. When, <laughs> when I go and, and they tell me that, I said, damn, I must have, they must have been watching me then. And it's unbelievable. But, uh, hey, Michael, I love to do you get a lot of love when you step out in the public and people recognize you? <laughs> do they like maul you like, you know, one of your autographs oh. like that? Oh yeah, um, you know it happens. I don't know about mauling me, but um, <laughs> it happens all the time, you know. And um, you know, I, I'm just, just, just a normal guy, just Michael. That's it, and um, that's the way I treat everybody. So it doesn't bother me at all if they come up to me or you know ask me for an autograph or. Um, can I take a picture with you? Oh, sure, man. I'm I'm very proud to do that. Uh, you know, it it really it, it's satisfying to me that they want a picture with me. So, um, hey, I give it I give it to them, and um, they gave me all the fan support, and I thank them right back. And that's why I'm like that, also. Um, but naturally, as a person. I'm just like that anyways. But hey. for them to give me all that fan support, that's that's a lot of love. And I, I really respect that. Thank well, you all. You know, speaking of the one respect, last one. Oh, go ahead, Gonzalo. Go ahead. I just one more. I'm oh, sorry about that. Um, is it true you're coming? You're going to make a movie out of your life. Oh, is that true? Yeah, they're working on that. They're working on it. A movie or a documentary? Great. 
they're still working on all of that. So okay, okay. we're not sure yet. Well, we're looking forward That's to it. Awesome. Who are you going to get to play you? Like somebody, uh, uh, Antonio Banderas or? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Everybody asks me that question. <laughs> I'm just joking though. <laughs> if, if I could act, I'd be a great actor. Believe me. <laughs> no, but I'm, whoever it is, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, if they know how to act, that's fine. I mean, I really, you know, it, it's unbelievable if, if I think about it, you know. Like when you guys ask me all these questions, I start thinking or, or uh, after I finish, I go, God damn. Can you think about it? Did I answer that question right? <laughs> well, listen. You know, that's normal. How about this one? Because we were talking about the respect and the, the the amount of work you put in and all that. Well, how about all that? When you all the training you did the, from the amateurs to the professionals to the defenses to the actual fights in the ring, you retire and then you get the call that you're going to be inducted into International Boxing Hall of Fame, and they give you the ring, they give you the plaque, and now your name is in there with guys like Henry Armstrong, Sugar Ray Robinson. Like, how, how does that feel? Is that when you got that ring? Was it like ah, it was all worth it? When I when I got the call, when I got the call, I couldn't believe it. I said, "Damn!" I started crying. So now you get the point. I want to cry right now, man. <laughs> so you know, it's just unbelievable that I'm up there with them guys, and I'm satisfied, and I'm glad to be up there. It, it, it's great to be with other great fighters, and I appreciate. All the fan support, man, because you guys, you you don't understand with us fighters, when we have big fan support like that, you don't know how exciting it is. Just walking, walking up to the ring, man, walking up, just that walk up to the ring. You you got chills up and down your body. You just, God damn, I'm just want to go in there and just whip some ass and, and give everybody, everybody here a fight, man. And that's, that's what I was all about. I mean, it's unbelievable when you think about it. You know, when I go back and think about it and I just go, damn, you know, just like I, all these fighters, you know, all the greats, man, I'm up there with them and, and it's unbelievable. I, I'm amazed by it myself. Yeah, man. That's, that's why when uh, Bucho, the co-host to Mr. BDA, asked me last week, <laughs> get somebody to come on the show and the fight was going down between Estrada and Gonzalez. I was like, wow, man, I was thinking of one of my favorite fighters of all time. That was a flyweight. And finally we got you this week. But anyways, man, I'm like, it feels so like it's rewarding to listen to you. And this is like, you know, you're just one of those guys, man, that I always looked up to. And thank you for accepting my invitation, man. Oh, anytime, man. I, I really enjoy this. And, uh, Thank you guys for um, just being great, great boxing fans. And thank you for following me. And I really appreciate it. Always. Thank you, Michael. And you know what, man? You're the example of the, the reason why people still respect you so much is because you didn't go there to just throw one shot at a time and win. I mean, at the end of the day, you did step in there and you sacrificed your health. But you also, you know, you did it to win, but also to, to entertain the fans. Because there's too many fighters out there who uh, they say, oh, I'm going to win no matter how. And they don't care about the fans and they don't understand. Well, we're okay. Yeah, we're not risking our lives, but we are paying for you guys to give it your all. And some guys don't even do that. So it's it's almost like a slap to the face of the fans. But you're the type of guy that you did it with skill, but you also did it with wanting to hurt the other guy and to give the fans a show. So, I mean, as fans, we can't ask for more than that. And I see Jay. Jay, are you there? Because we got somebody dropping by. Yes, I am. We're back. All right, no, no, no problem. You wanted to ask a question? Because we're about to wrap it up. Yeah, well, thanks for letting me back on. And champion, I mean, I can't get enough time to, to speak to you. Um, for the little bit of time we have left, what was your relationship like with your Olympic teammates? Uh, Andrew Maynard, Roy Jones, um, uh, all of them. Um, how well did y'all get along? How well did y'all know each other before the team came together? We... You know, some of us knew each other. We didn't all know each other. You know, we knew each other from tournaments and all like that, but not like, um, you know, 
like close friendships or close friends. We're we're good friends now. We're not real real close, but hey, I talked to all of them, and uh, you know, I got most of their numbers. Not everybody's number, but um, anytime I get a chance of seeing them, you know, that's just um, how we are. We never really knew each other until the Olympics. I mean. A national championships, we'll see each other before all that kind of stuff. In tournaments, we see each other, but we never knew one another until we were in camps together, and we were in camp for a long time, so we got to know each other pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost like you went to war uh, together at the same time. Uh, Mark, did right. you want to ask a question? I think I saw your... your uh... Um, no, sorry, no, sorry. Okay, okay. You, you guys, let me know because I'm, I'm basing this off on your icons. If you're unmuted, I'm assuming you want it. So that, that, that's what I'm going off on. Um, uh, go ahead, Ragnar. No, I just want to say, Michael Caldwell is a great champion, man. He's a great champion. There was never a boring fight that I've seen of his, and so, you know, I salute him, and it's good to have him on, and you know, speak to, to a, you know, to a guy who I consider the legend, and most, most boxing fans do. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely, Thank you. yeah. Thank you Absolutely, man. Yeah, because we've talked to some boxers and we always enjoy hearing war stories and all that. Uh, but you really, uh, so far, you're one of the, the, the all-time greats we've had. You know, Canastota, bona, bona fide Hall of Fame, pound for pounder. So it was a real treat talking to you. Uh, hopefully we can do it again because we barely scratched the surface of exactly. all of your fights. And All right. Fantastic. Michael, thank you very much, man. Check out, no problem, man. Check out Michael Carbajal's uh, Instagram page. It's uh, Michael Carbajal slash official. I'm going to be posting it on the uh, description. Underscore of, official. Underscore, underscore, yeah, sorry. You, you can see I don't use social media that much. Yeah, Mike, I'm putting it up on the screen here. So there you have it, fellas. And there's the, uh, actually, that's not it. There you go. Facebook page over here. Michael Carbajal. This is Facebook. He's got videos, photographs. Hopefully one day the YouTube channel. Don't forget, Michael, YouTube channel. I want to see those breakdowns. I want to see those breakdowns of that left hook of yours to the body and the, the, that short right hand. So uh, thank you. No, thank and, you, and, man. And thanks to uh, Michael's wife for helping setting this up. You can tell. You can tell that she loves that man very much. That's like right. A whole lot. That's right. Thank you. Yeah. Th thank, thank you. You guys take care of me. Believe me. <laughs> yeah thank her again for from all of us because i know oh, she yeah. and gonzalo oh, yeah. work hard to set this up. all right fantastic well listen michael can't thank you enough again man thank you for everything thank all you right, for man. all the take thank it easy you. man thank you for being here take care all you right. too man have a thank good you. one bye bye all right, all right. salute there gonzalo yeah gonzalo Shit. once again the bda booking agent comes through Where with the go, uh, gonzalo Great job, Gonzalo. Great job getting him on the show, man. And may I say uh, thank you to... Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, may I say um, thank you to all of you guys, too, for the great questions, man. Great questions from all of you. You can tell your, your boxing fans and that you, you actually have seen these men fight and you, you enjoy talking to a guy. Because, you know, I, and I thank you to everybody in the chat room, too, who asked questions. I, you know, we got a, a, a different width of questions, a width of questions really from all angles, you know, what does he think about this fighter or, or what did he think of the fighters he fought? Like, really, questions from all angles, man. Really enjoyed it. So, thank no, you guys. Was, on the, hey, his, his demeanor's the pretty really badass. No, his... Oh, he's, he's a great guy, bro. He's the a, the like, one I enjoyed the most yeah. was the quest one. Because if you go, like, I didn't see the fight live when it happened, right? I just, you know, obviously I started watching him and I think maybe I caught it, like, I don't know, five years after that fight happened. And and so and I and I saw how pumped he was, but I didn't I didn't realize that he was bad mouthing. You you could see him in the press conference, he was talking shit. And uh you could see him talking shit to to, to Carball, but I didn't know I, I had no idea that he was talking about his mom and all that shit. <laughs> that's fucking crazy. Yeah, that's that's and he insane. beat the lip dude, he the way he beat him up and knocked him out, I felt like he wanted him to continue to fight so he could hurt him. Jeez. Like he could do this for another three more rounds, like a brutal beating if he wanted to. Mm -hmm. It seemed yeah. almost like Esteban de Jesus Roberto Duranish. Mm. 
I almost yeah. There you go. There you go. Yep. You have to Something win. I'm like going to ask him if we ever get the chance to talk to Michael Carbajal again. I'm going to ask him did, 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 in hindsight: Does he think the guy did it because he was scared and he felt he needed an edge to get under his skin? Because I mean, who in the right mind would start insulting the other guy's mother? You know what I mean? Like I remember, um, what's his name, Baby Baby Miller, recently did it to uh, Joshua a little bit, and then subsequently we learned yeah. that he was on the P three different PEDs or whatever he was. So that's indicative of a guy yeah. who's not really all that confident. I, but the exception is myself. I take all sorts of PEDs, but I'm supremely confident, so don't get it twisted. Um, more shout, confident, don't you? That's right, absolutely, man. Shout out to Truth Son in the chat room uh, for his super chat. He says, respect to the champ for being truly honest and humble in this age of arrogance and being a truly a great fighter. Hope he comes on again to the BDA. Well, thank you, Truth Sons. Um, hope you, you enjoyed uh, the interview as much as we did. And it's true, huh? it's interesting. Like I was telling Gonzalo too before the uh, when we were working this out, and I said, you know, it's I really enjoy talking to retired fighters because they'll be honest. They don't have that chip on their shoulder anymore most of the time because they already lived through it. They don't got anything left to prove. So they'll tell you, yeah, and in this from fight, that era. yeah, that's yeah. from that era. Like we're, yeah. we're telling the truth was normal, or being honest was normal, mm -hmm. or there was no spin. It, 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 it shows me. Thing. It shows me. Yeah. That he's got like integrity, just the way he's like a stand up dude. You're just not like a regular dude, like some of these fighters nowadays that talk all this trash. You don't become an all time great and considered one of the best of all time for nothing. Like, what he, what he reflects is in, in his attitude is pretty badass, man. His demeanor, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, you exactly. Know, oh, sorry. Oh, no, 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 please, BD, it's your show. Go ahead. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead, man. Well, I, I'm going through the Ring Magazine like top five division by division, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in 1994, and uh, Michael Carbajal is of course number one at, one at 108. But then you have Junku Chang, Yoko uh, Gushikin, uh, Meng Wu Yu, and Hilary Zapata, and they were all great fighters too. But they didn't make the living that Carbajal did because he brought that American attention, that American money, that American world, which leads to worldwide fame to that area. These guys were also great fighters, and I'm not saying they were or were not better than Michael Carbajal. But his determination, his star, is what brought that to where what we just had, uh, you know, last week or the week before with uh, um, Chiquita, uh, Chocolito and Estrada. Yeah. Given that was at 115, but they started at 105 and 108 respectively, and they became the big stars now because Carbajal brought that uh, energy to him. Oh uh, yeah, Chiquita Gonzalez was already famous, but he didn't. He was not going to make that money, make that start, and make that fame without Carbajal. He brought that to them. Mm -hmm. Car Carbajal was the first like real major like crossover of what we call the little little guys, like. Like I like I mentioned, he's the only he's the only person below one eighteen pounds to ever get Ring Magazine Fighter of the Year to get that unique clout. And that, in that area, if you look at the guys around them in the early nineties with Roy and Bo and the Atlantics and Mike and fucking and Chavez and oh, come on, man, the fact he managed to do that is crazy. Yeah, it's true. Eh? When you think about it in those terms. The fact that he's fight, not only fighter of the year, but fighter of the year in 1993. I mean, that's, man, that's insane. And it's, it's thanks to him, these um, lower weight divisions have been able to capitalize on it. And he hit hard. Like, that's the thing that I was thinking, we were talking, I was talking with Gonzalo about that. Like, I know when uh, Chocolatito was in the lower and, you know, below 115, he was, a, he, he could crack and he was a monster. But I still don't know if he hit as hard punch for punch as Carvajal. Like the way Carbajal no. would drop some of these guys, it's you could tell. I, don't know, I guess more thoughting power is what you would call. I, 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 I don't think so, man. Like he had a bit more volume to him, but singular one punch, no shot and chocolate. He does uh, Arsenal beats that man's left hook, bro. No Jeez. way. Yeah. In the later rounds, when he went the distance right, he would throw some hell of a shots trying to like take the other dude. Where he still had the snap, and there were there were heavy shots. It's like wow, dude. He he had power, man. Absolutely. If I may, without, without studying the film right in front of me, we were saying Chocolito, Chocolito versus uh, um, Michael Carbajal. To me, it's like comparing a Chavez Barrera type to a Morales type, and with mm. Carbajal being the Morales type, because given that hook was great, but he also had a good right hand, and he relied on it a lot, and he used the jab more. It was less, he, he, even though he could apply pressure, 
it wasn't like Chavez and Barrera that's in your face with the jabs there to set up to get that hook to the body and work everything else. He was more balanced, like Morales, like Salvador mm -hmm. Sanchez. Well, you made a great point, too, about the balance he had and how effortlessly he could drop guys. Because, I mean, when he dropped Arce with, in that final sequence with a right hand, I kept watching it before the interview, and I said, how did he... Because he looked a little bit squared up, but he obviously wasn't because he got a lot of follow-through on that right hand. And it's... I, I have to assume, like you said, it's that footwork. I mean, he flat-footed to get as much power as possible, but also just turn those hips and boom, like a whip just knocked those guys out. I mean, it was it was... And, I, you know, uh, Mark, you also asked a great question about the Joe Lewis type short right hand and left hook. I think I saw in an interview he talked about that at some point. I think he had watched the, the Joe Lewis. Or somebody suggested it to him, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. It, it was his father. His, his dad was a big fan. Um, I I wanted. I just wanted to see um, see what he'd talk about if I brought it up to him again a few years later. Because it was, it was an interview that I watched years ago. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and you stayed, right, what time is it over in the UK right now? It's 3 a.m. right now. Oh. Um, I was going to I was gonna go to bed um, at about 11 tonight, but when you guys mentioned that you were going to have him on, I, I had to stay up just to talk to him because he's the main reason I, I watch Laura Wave Fighters, man. It was just an absolute honor to get to talk to him, man. Mark, did you have a mocha with uh, cream on top? <laughs> Absolutely. I did. I did. Nice, nice. Well, you know what? I'm glad you were on, and I'm glad I did pressed, it. bitch. Oh, jeez. I'm glad. I'm I was glad gonna you... ask him about his brother because. Mm -hmm. um... But you, you, you're cutting off, there, Gonzalo. Oh yeah. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I was gonna ask him about his brother because they said that I could, but I didn't want to tarnish like the way he was feeling. I think you're cutting off again, man. Yeah, I was not going to ask him about his brother, but he thought I did. I was yeah. asked him, actually, actually about Bob Arum and Don King, and I wanted to... Uh, I think he went back to Bob later, and he never really uh, answered back to that circle, but uh, I did not want to bring that up, up and into it, even though I knew what happened, but he misunderstood me, and he went into it anyway. Yeah, well, it's still in his mind, you know. I mean, it's. Much, I mean, how can it not be? It's your, your own brother. Yeah, you know, like like Gonzalo said, like he talked to his wife behind the scenes, and she said that it was because he th he's talked about it in 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 public before, but I just didn't feel like it was like we were having a good time talking about his boxing career. So, uh, I, yeah, I didn't think it was necessary to bring it up. But I mean, he he was willing to talk about it. He said, and you saw him when he started talking about it. He, you know. He, there was no qualms there, but hopefully, you know, when I look at a situation like that, obviously I'm not involved in that. So, if he wants to 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 do it the way he's doing it, that's you know, hey, listen, his brother did something to him that he feels is unforgivable. But hopefully, all I'm thinking is that hopefully there's a resolution at some point because you would hate you hate to see family members um, quarreling to to that degree. It, there's something I don't know. It just feels unsettling to me. Um, hey, BDA, you know what I like? Yeah. I liked when he said. When he talked about being nervous for every single fight, mm -hmm. I know I, I I have a really good feeling. I know what he's talking about. It's just that it's right in your stomach, but you can that could quickly turn into like adrenaline that works. Like it, it gives you this power that you can't really explain it. It's just you once you start letting your hands loose because you're kind of under pressure, and that and that that fear turns into adrenaline. Mm -hmm. You feel that yeah. shit all over your body. I, I think that's. I think it makes sense when he said, at least to me, watching the way he the way he fought throughout his career, it made sense, and I could sort of understand. And I think most a lot of people too. I could understand because it's that it's just that butterfly in your stomach. Some people let it, uh, and maybe it's happened to everybody, including him, at one time where it makes you nervous, but at the same time, it could also make you fight stronger. You know, a, a lot alert and let off some shots that you didn't even know you could you could hurt somebody that bad or you could hit that hard exactly well, that's a perfect example of that is i guarantee you cost of view was nervous going in against zab judah but you couldn't yes. see it in his face you yes. look at zab judah's face now that i've said this once you walk zab judah's wa uh, ring walk his face was stone cold from the nose down but you go back and look at those eyes and how wide they are and how dilated his pupils are he didn't have control over that and look what happened Hmm. 
That's an yep. interesting point, man. Yeah. It, 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 back to this, into, in that regard of the psychology of the boxer, I wanted to try to get more into that, but I forget how we got sidetracked. But when I, when I asked him, when we were talking about the, the, the nervousness and all that, you know, we've all heard fighters say that the moment they don't feel that fear anymore before a fight, it's when they know they're losing it. You know, they're losing that, yeah. that fire. That That's why it's so that, important yeah. to come in good shape, uh, uh, BDA for these 12 round fights or these fights that, you know, they're going to last long because that adrenaline, if you come in there and you're weak or you're, you're dehydrated or whatever, the, whatever the case may be, that trains you, that it, it starts to drain you. You could be up for it. Like, you know, the adrenaline is working for you, but as the fight goes along, you start to drain because, you know, when you're emotional, obviously fighting is emotional. They say, they tell you to keep calm as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Right. But that's why it's important for guys like that to stay in good shape in case they got to go 12 rounds or fight six rounds of of non-stop action exactly yeah and he he was like i again i haven't seen all his fights but the ones that i've seen i've yet to see him uh exhausted you know by the 10th or, or ninth he round. became a household name you know to put it in perspective he started fighting uh uh, what was it? Early '90s. I think he may have started '90 or, or '89. One of those years. Um, hmm. And so he became a household name where everybody from, from, you know, at least all over America, was starting to know him and people around the world when he knocked out uh, Chiquito Gonzalez. Man's just a I, fucking legend, bro. I thought that he was pretty well known um, worldwide, ba based off of the fact that most of the world had ESPN by that time, and Bob had him on there on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And um, that's. That is and I'll, I'll be honest with you. It also it, helped him with how exciting he was at the 88 Olympics, which was one of the most viewed Olympics is of all time worldwide. Like, because but, that's when a lot of countries started picking up the Olympics nationally. Yes. Yeah. But there was also a lot of uh, amateur talent from there, like um, Arthur Johnson, Johnny Tapia. And they were all on uh, ESPN getting a lot of recognition, bring a whole lot of inter entertainment. All, down below featherweight and they were all getting that kind of garnering that attention um and he stood out more than the others but they they all kind of helped to bring that new uh that new blood into boxing but in a division that most of us didn't watch very often because it was hard to find uh, bob Arman and, and uh, michael carbajal brought it to mainstream tv on a regular basis that's right mm. you you got to give bob Arum credit too man the guy knows how to find someone if if it's entertaining he sees skill and quality in it he'll he'll promote it like he deserves to for the most part i mean yeah you opened up the doors man for what we've got now 20 something years later so fantastic interview man i was i really enjoyed it <laughs> some people in the chat room though like fucking grievous he goes hey ask him if he ever partook in in some yayo in that nightclub i think you, you really think i'm gonna ask him that during the fucking <laughs> you, you really think of... and then fucking jim mcdonald's like yo uh, ask him ask him if you thought you should have won the fight against Ross <laughs> like, what the fuck? and i was actually gonna ask it un until you, you yeah you... i had to stop that Roy crop is a character from coronation street who got married to a tranny Oh, jeez, Louise. Uh, yeah, I looked up the photograph. He looks like a bad guy from a James Bond movie. And I said, why would he's asking about Coronation Street? I mean, get the fuck out of here, man. But overall, yeah. You, you know what's great about him, man? If, with fights gone, when, as he had more fights, see, he was putting, he was he was one of those guys that were putting it together. You started seeing him score more knockouts. That's a guy, that's a student of the game. You know, mm -hmm. you see that. You see a guy start off, you know, he, he's having, he, he, he's having the fights go to distance. Uh, more than he's knocking him out. Not he's always been a good knockout artist, but not at the at the level as he did in let's say the second half of his career. He was knocking these fucking dudes out. He was putting them away. Real power, man. Yeah, yeah. Miss, Mrs. BDA, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna call me Mrs. BDA. Mrs. He said Mrs. Yeah. I, well, I'm that? tired. I'm tired right now, and like, yeah. So, Mrs. BDA. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks thanks hey, for having me on. It was Mark, a pleasure. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, what do they call it? You, uh, what, what's the X? I'm not she, he, I'm an X. That's what I am. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're, um, non-binary. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, whatever that <laughs> is, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Remember with Dead Game? With Dead you you game? have. You, how, I'm trying to get out of here, right? We're yeah, not yeah, yeah. Into, We're not getting into <laughs> how many chromosomes you have or you don't have, whether you're Down syndrome, <laughs> intersex, or anything otherwise. Have a good one, Mr. BDA. Big up to Gonzalo for getting him on. Frank, I'll talk to you at another time. Jay as well. It, Peace and love to all of you guys. Take Mark, it easy, Mark. Have a good night or a good morning. Take it easy, Mark. Thank you for being on, man. Yeah, again, yeah, shut yeah, up. You remember when Dead Gay called in one day and he said, he says something like, peace, peace, brother. And he said, wait a second. Wait a second. Did he just say peace, bitch? And I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounded like he said, peace, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> you thought it was, he thought he called you that the whole time. <laughs> Hey, but yeah, shout out to Gonzalo, man, for, for uh, again, because he, he had to go. G, man. The yeah. G. He got us a that real score awesome. right there, man. And shout out to you guys again. He grew like up in I Tijuana, said. man. He grew up in Tijuana, man. He's a fucking, you know, who knows who, knows who Gonzalo really is. That's a good point, man. Who knows what he did <laughs> down there? You never know, man. But, uh, no, look- but yeah, sh- shout out to Gonzalo, man. Shout out to you guys. You, uh, Jay, Mark, uh, recognized for being on and helping me out with this interview. You, you guys asked a lot of questions that... Uh, I would never have come up with so really appreciate it and it was a nice little c- calm after the, the 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 chaos that ensued beforehand over at the other show we were doing <laughs> Jeez, Louise, yeah was... i couldn't really get it recognize hurt i actually had to tell everyone to shut the hell up so i could actually get a warning <laughs> you know i gotta I got apologize to, to bucho i started a lot of that shit <laughs> <laughs> no yeah jay Dude, you gotta uh... Jay, in those uh, type of ahead. shows, those type of shows on Fridays, it's what we call um, open phone lines. <laughs> and anything goes, so we let anybody in on the Discord, on Streamyard, on the phones, and that's the type of chaos that ensues. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> just uh, we're, we're, we're sorry, Jay. This is just the kind of no worries. And, and, and I and I added fuel to the fire, man. Shout out to uh, the British guy, Crowjar. He was like, "Yo, I like you, recognize, but you're a piece of shit. Fuck off." <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear that part, but yeah, he was definitely in on the whole thing. He was, he was willing to talk to everybody. He, he was willing to debate everything that came around. I, I liked him. Yeah. Yeah, he was cool. He, he was cool. I, I, we were talking about ring generalship, and I tried to explain it to him, and he goes back and contradicted what I said. I was like, I just said this in English. What part of it didn't you understand? <laughs> <laughs> and what about the other guy, Leighton? Leighton getting into it with uh, bold type, and uh, and Kevin too. <laughs> Kevin wouldn't stop it. <laughs> uh, Kevin, Kevin was Kevin really fun. started the whole thing. It was Kevin. Yeah, it's Ke- Kevin's the instigator. Oh. Kevin's the- bold type was just having fun, but Leighton, I think he wasn't all there. Leighton, and he really thought they were being serious. So I mean, yeah, it's it's. Uh, it's, it was a crazy show, but it's fun. It's a type of shows that we got to do a bit of everything. We do the serious shows, then we do the fun shows, and then we do the crazy shows. So you got to do a little bit and of both. And then you have something like this, which is just a complete honor. And uh, again, I can't. Well, you, you saw what I wrote you about the fact that I just feel lucky that you guys include me in this. And then I get to talk boxing with, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of people listening. And, you know, when I was growing up, everyone thought, oh, he knows a lot about boxing, but I just talked about it. Well, now I'm just talking about it in a platform that people get to hear and enjoy. And it, it it's amazing that you guys let me in on this and I'm always honored. Well, you got to, well, first I, of all, I, it's yeah. it's good to have you on board, Jay, as always. And you got to thank uh, Al Gore for inventing the internet. He didn't really invent yes. the internet, but you know, that's what... He, he no, he, he, wait, time out, time out. He has something to do with it. A little okay, something, well. but... Yeah. <laughs> and then as George <laughs> Bush said, that if he really did his homework, he'd realize that every address starts with a W. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't like what we have to say, we'll kill you. No, oh, wait a minute. No, that's not. No. Hey, no by the way, no, that was. If you don't believe what we have to say, we'll kill you. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. What he said? Oh, boy. I reckon he's just playing around, by the way. He's playing around. Of he's course, talking about. Man. He's going to kill you in a game of chess or playing dominoes or whatever Puerto Ricans do. Um, listen, shout out to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to you guys. Thank you for being on. Really appreciate it. Oh, awesome. Shout out. Yeah, man. Peace, shout peace. out again to um, Gonzalo for, for making this happen. Yeah, shout out to. Uh, Michael Carberhall's wife too, because she she was the one that was relaying uh, all the information to Gonzalo. So shout out to to, to them. To that. What's that? I said amen to that. Oh yeah, amen, man. She 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 kept it all uh, scheduled, and uh, shout out to everybody in the in the chat room and all the super chats you guys sent during the show. I'm talking about Chet Collins, Truth Sons. Uh, real good questions that you guys asked during the show. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate the super chats. They do take us. A long way to setting up the phone lines and the putting the shows on speaker because that does cost 
uh, a certain amount. So we always appre- every little bit helps, guys. And of course, the most important thing is that you continue to support us by listening and subscribing and hitting that thumbs up button. Really helps us out. So um, that's about it, fellas. Thank you for joining us. Really appreciate it. And I will. I suppose we'll catch you on the next one. Um, Friday. I mean Friday. Well, it is Friday. Tomorrow. Yes, we got it Hook, is. Hooker versus. Um, <laughs> Yes, it is. Hooker versus Virgil Ortiz. Um, Baturbiev over there in Russia. So it's probably going to be like 3 p.m. Eastern time here. That fight and also the uh, Okoli versus Glowacki fight. Probably about 5 or 6 p.m. Eastern time over here. And of course, at night, we got the Ortiz fight. So a little bit of something for everybody. Not the best fights in the world, but uh, something to get us through. Since we're boxing degenerates, we need our fix. Jay, anything else you want to say before we go? Good night, Mr. BDA. Thank you so much. I've said it a million times, but when something like this happens, you can't say it enough. Uh, you have a good weekend, and I'll be talking to you on one of the uh, near shows coming up. Fantastic, man. Thank you again for being on. Really appreciate it uh, for helping out here and always contributing to the show. Uh, can't thank you enough. So shout out to you and enjoy your weekend, man. Thank you. You too. Have a good night. You too, man. And shout out to everybody, like I said, everybody in the chat room I'm talking about Lance Meyer, Hard Recoil, Uncle Burnt Apostrophe, Triple JJJ, Jaguar, Eparuqua, Jonathan Murison, Lobito, aka Gonzalo, uh, Saint Brit, Rapax Trucking Company, GB Guthrie, shout out to GB Guthrie, shout out to Truth Son, Kid Tops Call, Jonathan Mer- Blue Call Sport TV, aka Del Boy, Mega Man, Lance Meyer, T Tone, shout out to T Tone, Toledo, Grievous. <laughs> His fucking question he wanted me to ask. Lance Meyer, uh, shout out to the Coronation Street Boys. Hold on. Uh, like uh, Dan, Big Dan, um, Unrivaled. Oh, shout out to him, Unrivaled too for uh, dropping by. Check his channel out, Unrivaled Boxing Talk. Campos Vasquez, Friendly Fire. Uh, <laughs> Jim McDonald Boxing. Shout out to Jim McDonald. And everybody else, guys, thank you for joining us. Peace. Have a good one. Take it easy out there. <laughs>